Hello, everyone. Hi. It's been a while. Well, for us, not for them. <laughs> yeah. Well, they were they weren't supposed to know that. But yeah. hi, I'm Rory. <laughs> Wait, sorry, I forgot how this works. Um, you want to tell them who you are? <laughs> no, no, no. It goes you first. And then, oh, right. And it then does. Me. Oh, it's Rory. And this is Ronnie? Question mark. Yeah, maybe. Point. <laughs> We'll figure it out as we go along. But hello, welcome back to Have and Have Not. You know, just you know, the thing where um we talk about things that we have read versus what people have not read. And today is an enigma. It's a very special episode because why, Rory? Well, today is a very special episode because we both have actually read this book. Yes, we have. And who has not read this book? Well, that would be my brother Noah. Say hi, Noah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> you might be noticing oh my gosh guys the quality has improved significantly in just that one microphone and that is correct we have only updated one piece of equipment <laughs> but well, it's okay we're getting there i'm sorry we're, we're poor in our 20s we're, we're trying surviving and thriving yeah. we're just people who really like books <laughs> i like books <laughs> Yeah, so Noah. <laughs> Thanks, Noah. <laughs> Noah's here today because me and uh, Ronnie have been on this Sarah uh, J. Mass journey. And he has not read anything by her. And so yeah. we were like, oh, dude, you, you got to read Akatar. So I'm on my throne of glass journey with Ronnie. But Noah Noah needed to experience um, uh, Akatar for himself. Yes, so, he did. So he's read the first book. But before we get to Noah doing our our special episode uh, and explaining the plot of Akatar to us, me and Ronnie have to share what we're drinking. Alcohol. <laughs> So our themed drink for today, because we're starting to actually get creative again, <laughs> is called a Spring Court Spritzer. Do it you is. know what's in it, Ronnie? Did you you watched me make it? Do you know? No, I was finagling. It? You were finagling. I was finagling. Stuff. It is Moscato with ice and a really fancy Italian blood orange soda. soda. It's delicious. delicious. I I like it. <laughs> I have beer. <laughs> it's Belgian. <laughs> so in true, actually, Aquatar it fashion, go, it kind of fits. It kind of goes in right with so. it because of all the fairy tale interventions. Yeah, so. Noah's the human realm and where people are disgusting and drink beer. And we're the pretentious ones pretentious. In, the, in the fairy realm. Right? Amazing. We've gone over the wall. And it's red, of course, because of, you know, blood. all the yeah, blood, because all the people she kills, <laughs> the wolf she brutally murders. Yeah. Wolf had it coming. <laughs> all right good to so, know noah as noah said and as we said um we're gonna be getting into this so essentially we're gonna be like that because it's not a have and have not in the traditional sense noah's gonna go plot by plot point um and we're all just gonna chat about our thoughts and feelings and our well roy and i have read the whole aquatar series so noah's gonna talk about his predictions yeah we're very interested to hear what what he thinks is gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> because oh boy is it a doozy well he kind of i think some of it was probably spoiled for him a little bit but i don't <laughs> he's nodding he's like yeah well i mean it's kind of unavoidable at this point but he it's doesn't know all that over much. the fucking place i'm trying to get my friends to read crescent city and the problem is sjm and crescent city were so big because of the last line in the second crescent city book i'm not gonna tell you bitch you gotta read it for yourself but <sighs> okay um my friend yamile she was like Oh, I'm being so good. I'm not finding anything. Then literally she's scrolling on TikTok one day and the and like the, people are so mean with their spoiler warnings as in they don't even have them anymore. They yeah. just have the line. You and just she was see like, shit. She's like, I promise I really tried to be good. I really tried. Every time I heard Crescent City, boom, she scrolled. But that's all I done. Well, that's why I was so happy when we went to me and Ronnie worked at summer camp together. <laughs> Oh yeah, and I was so happy when we were at summer camp. Not in general, but when I had to read the book because Ronnie recommended we this this book series to me when we were literally isolated in Pennsylvania the year after COVID. So I knew fucking jack shit about these books. I didn't know any of the characters. I didn't know any of the spoilers. I barely even knew who Sarah J. Maas was. A queen. Yeah, I literally had only ever heard of the first book. I had no idea what the fuck it was about. So I I was lucky. I wish we would have like recorded our thoughts back then. But we have Noah now. Now we have Noah. Yes. Yeah, My so, Adonis. Yes. Your, Ronnie's Adonis. We've made that uh, very clear uh, in our friendship that... Noah is Rory's a, my a lover, and Noah's my Adonis. 
And then Lou is the piece of crud on the bottom of my shoe that just sticks around, and I don't like it. Lose my other brother. By There's the way. a backstory behind these nicknames. I don't know if they told you that. No, they, they, do, they <laughs> I didn't. Think, and, I think uh, we're leaving we it. Yeah, we're leaving it kind of enigmatic. So, without like further enig- ado, <laughs> let's get started. Off we go. Yeah. Chapter so, one. Gets, let's go, Noah. Noah has a, a plot synopsis basically on his phone in case he needs to refer back to it because who the fuck remembers everything that happens in a Sarah J. Mass book? Um, not me. Not certainly not me. <laughs> I say that facetiously. I, I mean that so seriously. <laughs> I've been listening to Carrie can read recap it every chance I get, so I'm pretty close to knowing the whole plot. Yeah, that's that's fair enough. I've watched her synopsis on the first book a couple times. I and yeah. I still don't fucking remember. <laughs> There's so many things. There's so many things that happen. All right, Noah. Um, okay, so Chapter yeah, I, I read this book a while ago. Um, so I like they said I don't remember everything uh, perfectly. So I, I do have a plot synopsis to sort of help me keep track of some of the events that happened and refresh my memory. Um, okay, so as I sort of recall it, to the best of my ability, um, Feyre, that's our main character. Sorry, but that's like the dumbest fucking name ever. Let's just start from there. <laughs> like, I hate to be a hater, but like, Feyre. Feyre in a story Feyre. about fucking fairies, dude. Like, Feyre in Fairyland. I, 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 like, I mean, come like on. Freya. I mean, I don't, I don't think that's what was happening there. Personally, no, <laughs> I, I don't get that vibe just, at all. I think that's a coincidence. I wonder if it was supposed to be Freya, and then she looked back. She's like, "That's not how you spell Fe- Freya." So let's just go with it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so yeah, she's our main character. Um, she used to come from a really rich family. Things went south for them. Now they're poor. <laughs> now uh, they're poor. Now they're dying. Uh, it kind of seems like she's the only one in her family who realizes that. Uh, the others are... The one sister, I think it's Nestra, is like kind of kind of Nes- sucks. Nesta. 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 She comes back later, Noah. You should remember her. Okay, she kind of sucks. She does uh, come back. She's mean. Shut the fuck up, Ronnie. <laughs> stop Context. don't even don't even i don't even want to talk about it go ahead um there's the other sister who's forgettable um <laughs> yep. the boring one she's elaine like, elaine yeah she's like nice but also dumb so she doesn't realize they're poor so she like paints which is cute but it's expensive and they need food it's actually um Feyre who paints Oh, okay, okay. Elaine just looks at the flowers. Okay, Elaine, Elaine has literally no personality. Her She's personality there. is garden. Yeah, it's garden. <laughs> and favor and I'm just and thinking pretty, but not too pretty. <laughs> I'm just thinking like if she if she has such a passion for the garden, why not like grow potatoes or something like actually useful? I know that really doesn't make any fucking She's sense. She's just like I'm going to plant a tulip. You you know, you'd think like giving a character a hobby that is actually resourceful and making her still the most useless fucking person in the family is kind of remarkable. Like, it's, that is a feat. There was a lot of not thinking. Yeah, that was, that's really dumb. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah, why that, the fuck isn't is she very, planting that, potatoes? That's a solid point. Uh, moving on. <laughs> I mean, uh, the carrots you grow can be like artisanal. <laughs> like, she can get p- purple carrots and you just burp. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we're only a few minutes in and we're already, like, <laughs> slobbering all over the place. Okay, go ahead. Keep um, going. So, moving on. Um, so, like, Feyre is the only one who bothers to try to support her family. Her dad's there, too. He's, he's just kind of there. That's about he's it. He's a bum. That's about it. Um, so, she hunts. Uh, eat. They eat the meat. Sell the pelts. Um, yes. And yeah, pretty much. Yeah. She has, like... She and has, where's her mom? Uh, dead. 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 Because Fucking obviously, dead. dead parents, dead parents. She, she died. Check. Of, she she died. The she died of get the bitch out of the plot itis. Uh, so, um, <laughs> she died of a of the bitch itis disease. Yeah. <laughs> so either way, um, moving past that. Uh, so, like, she kind of has this like friends with benefit in town. Not that doesn't really go anywhere. Just, oh yeah. It's just basically to establish that she's not a virgin. So when she inevitably has sex with fairies later, it makes sense why it's good. <laughs> yeah, she's not like. <laughs> Stumbling. You know uh, what I'm saying? Because if like she had gone into this a virgin, it would have been like, it would have been like we ha- would have had to have a weird, awkward losing virginity scene. Oh my gosh, my first, my first dick is a big fairy dick. Yeah, that would be too much. You wouldn't be able to handle it. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Why would you even do that? Okay. Ronnie! Moving, moving past Ronnie, whatever that was. Um, oh no. Uh. So yeah. Uh. Oh, no. <laughs> she meets a mercenary in town. 
they have a weird conversation. Says the mercenary. Oh lady. no no no! Oh. You you skipped over the first chapter. Oh. Uh, the first chapter is when she it, they just had their last loaf of bread or they had their last meal. So she goes out further into the forest because it's winter and everything's dead. So all right. of the animals are closer to oh, the right, wall. That happens first. The so mythical it's... fairy wall. Yeah, we have yeah. to explain the world here a little. Okay, bit. it's my understanding that like humans and fairies are divided. There's like this big wall that I think is like half physical, half magic. That like that was se- my impression of it too. Separates their realms like mm-hmm. they live pretty separately i think there's a okay they they said there's occasionally like incursions by the fae just to like fuck with humanity but like which is why you stay away from the wall which is why Feyre is not staying away from the wall because she needs to hunt yeah i think it's like better game because people aren't willing to risk it um she's hunting she's tracking a deer he finds like this really nasty big wolf has gotten to it first i think she kind of like Figures it's probably a fae and mm-hmm. therefore a thinking being, but either like, uh, <laughs> but then she decides, I'm gonna eh, kill it. Fuck anyway. it, I don't care. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, it's, it's kind of half rationalization that it probably won't be, half I don't care if it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, it, she kind of nails it in the eye with her bow. She does. And so, then she's like, well, if it was a fair fairy, then it would have turned into like a fairy body and it doesn't. And she's like, oh. <laughs> Lucky me. Yeah, yeah like <laughs> some, not a some, fairy. some more and more rationalization. She tries to sell the pelt. Um, if you use she, synopsis, use the synopsis. Because she because <laughs> she skins it, and then she realizes, oh shit, I can't carry all this deer meat and the wolf. So she skins the wolf and takes the pelt home, which seems a little bit wasteful. Wasteful and also fucking unrealistic. You skin the whole ass wolf out in the snow. After being out in the snow for hours, her hey, hands are probably hey, hey. fucking freezing. She's pretty. She doesn't think. Yeah, but blood is hot. Field dressing is a thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Don't question. That just seemed like a lot. That, like She did very quickly. Don't question yeah. how I know these things, viewers. Re- <laughs> <laughs> he just knows things, okay? He's built different. That's why he's my Adonis. This is so weird already. <laughs> okay, keep going. Um, so, yeah, uh, not, 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 nothing really important happens after that. Uh, the point is, uh, important thing that happens is later that night, another really big wolf fairy shows up and is all angry because she killed his friend or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then sold his hide to a random woman in the market. Yeah, she's yeah. like, oh shit. Oh, maybe yeah, I shouldn't um, have done that. So, <laughs> uh, he tells her that, uh, an alternative to killing her and her whole family uh, he, she can, like, come with him and live with him in fairy, like, a whole life for a life thing. Yes. Which doesn't sound right from the get-go. Uh, <laughs> but it is. It does. It sounds incredibly suspicious. It sounds a bit from... too convenient. Yeah. It you w- killed my friend, so I get to take you Here, conveniently. Here's the thing, right, like, that I have to say about that, is... I almost feel bad for hating the first book so much, especially upon first read. But at the same time, I don't because I know where it goes and I have still mm-hmm. have problems. But if you read this first book and never read the rest of the books or like never got through it because I nearly almost didn't get through and the first I'm book. Like, Grow the fuck up, bitch. Yeah, like, handle it. I because almost, you're stronger than that. <laughs> I almost didn't get through the first book. Like upon first glance, I could see why even in the first chapter, somebody would just literally say, fuck this book. Because if you didn't know that that like whole deal was actually a fucking front you know like spoiler alert we're getting there but like it's not that's not the whole truth is what they're saying it's like you would just be like this is fucking stupid like you would just you would just think it's bad writing you know what i'm saying it is bad writing (laughs) like you would just literally be like what (laughs) like it's just too much it's so so stupid it's so clearly beauty and the beast and I'm so fucking sick of Beauty and the Beast retellings, dude. Like, it's to... never been it for me. I'm going to try to find the description of Tamlin because I really think you need to understand what Tamlin was described as looking like because it was bad. Hot with a big dick? I no. Mean... I mean... <laughs> well, yes. I mean, in hashtag beast mode. In beast mode. Okay. Well, keep while you're doing that, Noah can keep going. So keep going. Noah. Um. Okay. So he makes this incredibly suspicious sounding deal. Um. Yeah, the guy's name, his name is Tamlin. Uh, Tampon. Um, so I actually was in the Prithane, Prithian, uh, Prithian? Yes, yeah, it's Prithian. Prithian. Uh, which is like the magical fey realm. Uh, so, uh, and I'd live with him there. Uh, 
And he takes him back to his big house uh, in Prithian. No, no, go ahead. Well, yeah, so they're like going across the wall and she's like oh my gosh i'll just wait until he's looking away and then i'll start to run which is so stupid because this guy i found the description he is described as um a creature with a bear-like body a lupine head massive antlers lion-like mane long yellow fangs and the fluidity of a cat i literally don't know how somebody could look at something with that description and take it seriously i would just laugh my ass off but like imagine it bursting busting down your door and then she's like i'm just gonna run away from it and then he goes <laughs> yeah and this bitch is a hunter what are you fucking talking about <laughs> he, no 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 because he goes huh fairy magic and then she wakes up and it's spring and she's like how long was i asleep it is now spring it was winter these oh, i mean i'm God, sort Feyre. of skipping ahead but these are our romantic leads and that is a very <laughs> uncomfortable foot to start off on it's a, it's no it's 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 unsettled well, I, I'm just saying, like, the, the, the one thing she now knows about him is that she knows a few, two things about him. He kidnapped her and under threat of violence towards her family, and he can magically roofie her at any time. Uh, <laughs> the two things that are the scariest. Yeah, stuff. that that is, in fact, accurate. One thing I noticed about Feyre immediately when I first read this book, and maybe you agree or not, Noah, but she is the fucking dumbest character. She's fucking dumb. She is dumber than harry potter like she is so fucking stupid at least in harry potter we had the third person omniscient narrator Mm -hmm. but this is like all from her perspective so we only see the world through her eyes and she's a dumbass so we don't know jack shit about this place it's infuriating she'll look at something and be like it looks like a a, um a a apparatus with which you walk through and you're like a fucking door pharah you mean a door (laughs) no an apparatus with which you walk through and you, she's like, it's a mystery to me. And you're like, it's a door. A like, door. it's so infuriating. Anyway, sorry. Keep going. Um, so he takes her back to his manor. Um, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm having my, my the, the summary I have seems pretty broad stroke. So it's probably skipping a lot. And even I remember only a handful of stuff. Yeah. Um, the so, the yeah. handful of people there all are wearing weird masquerade masks. We like, meet Lucian. Lucian. Love uh, Lucian. He's this weird redheaded guy. The ultimate third wheel. Yeah. I actually thought he was a contender for the love interest. Yeah, you told me. And I was like, huh. Yeah, I really thought he was a contender for the love interest in this book because I fucking hated Tamlin the second I met him. I mean, honestly, that would have been more interesting than what happens, but um, we're going to move past that. (laughs) Uh, So yeah, like she she sent her a room. It's this big, it's big, all gets all gussied up or whatever. I think she, I think she's offered the chance to gussy up, but says no, because reasons uh <laughs> she's angry to be there she's not like i'm not taking your stuff um they go to dinner and they, she kind of starts learning a bit more about how fa- the prithian works and how the fey work yeah, yeah um so there's apparently a lot of misinformation among humanity about how the fey actually work just a way back so here's the thing uh, not to interrupt you but because i'm gonna lose my thought if i don't and you just mentioned her being like the brat trope you know where she's like refusing to participate in tamlin's finery Mm -hmm. and the thing is this isn't like a hate on sarah j mass it's like on a personal level but it just annoys me that she probably because of the way she like approaches her writing and also her fans act like she's above some of the stupid shit that like beginning fantasy authors do because she does to her credit craft a lot of twists that you really might not see coming or are in fact subversive which i will give her credit for but in this case it's like she's literally just straight up doing that fucking trope of like oh i'm cloaked in finery and i'm going to be a brat about it and i don't want this and you're just like oh shut the fuck up like you're good babe yeah you're fucking fine oh my god your punishment is to be kept in a castle and wear pretty clothes and be fed every day fucking like life fucking sucks like it does suck like she is not above some of these tropes and i feel like people keep forgetting that that some of the tropes she uses are not a a a conscious choice to that she's going to later subvert she is just straight up doing a trope you know i don't Um, know like okay so um uh just to sort of bring this back this is kind of like the big meat of my issue with this book um okay (laughs) so um i think one of the things uh she starts learning about is that she's kind of worried that her family might starve she's not there to provide for them she's like the one person who actually is feeding them at all yeah and he confirms no i'm taking care of them they'll be provided for they won't starve without you 
which again I kind of feel like immediately cast doubt on his assertion that this is meant to be penance. Yeah. For like the death of his subject. Screw your family. You fucked me over. You know. But again, because Favor's a fucking idiot, she doesn't like Um, question any of this. Second thing, um, um, what she learns, as I said earlier, she starts learning about how the Fey actually work compared to like the sort of rumors humans learn. Um, so there's, they kind of, humans believe the sort of common, uh, folklore belief that they are hurt by iron. That's like common, even real life folklore. Um, they tell her this isn't true. They're only vulnerable, I think, to Ashwood, um, which, uh, I think is a folklore thing, but also they destroyed nearly all the ash trees in the world. So there's very yeah. little of it. And yeah. iron doesn't do jack shit. And, Lu- and, um, uh, T- Tamlin's like, Lucian, stop telling her all of her secrets. Uh, but, like, she's going to fucking find out anyway. You expect her to, like, stay here for months and she's never going to put any pieces together? I mean, well, it is Feyre. Never mind. It is Feyre. Oh, it is right, never. Right. It is Feyre. Well, as I was saying it, I felt stupid so, I mean, saying like, that. I mean, like, I kind of could pass that, but my, that's just compounded when we learn that she says that, like, she says to believe that the Fey art can't lie. Like, they're compelled to tell the truth, even if ha- of only half-truths. And then Lucian is hysterical, like, no, we lie all the time. That's total bull crap. <laughs> I'm doing it right now to you. <laughs> uh, which I feel like my immediate follow-up question to that response, response should be, did you lie to me about the pretext for my coming here? I mean, like, I based that under the belief that you were telling the unvarnished truth and couldn't do otherwise. But now what's I'm, stopping now him I'm from lying then? Because you can, in fact, lie to me. What is stopping him from lying did to that Did you lie about the iron though? thing? I mean, like... <laughs> Yeah. Every, now, every, like you just can. Conf- I mean, it feels. Yeah. Like did you lie about providing for my dad and my sisters? <laughs> like now, I doubt everything you just said. Uh, yeah. yeah. Are literally. you actually a man? Yeah. What What even is going on here? Oh yeah, it's God. a very good point. And, like now, beyond the plot stuff, is that in a weird way, it kind of takes the magic out of it for me. <laughs> um, you know, when you have that, dumb people, it usually does that. Um. Is that no? No. I mean, not like. I don't mean like in the metaphorical way. I mean so almost in a kind of a literal way. Like the Fae are less mysterious and and magic and otherworldly in this way. It's yeah, like, I also had a problem with that. Like the Fae come off to me as just hot people. That's my that's on my conceit with this issue. That's the, this is kind of like the crux of my um issue with this book. This is like the core part of it. Like like excuse me, too far ahead is that in general the Fae just come across as people but better. Like. Because they are. Like, there's just, like, no drawbacks to being fey. They're just people, but in every other way better. They The fey, the wood that hurts some ash doesn't even, like, do anything. It just makes wounds that heal normal. Oh, no. Actually, no. You haven't gotten to when the ash is a real issue in the second book. Okay, so maybe it's like mustard gas in the future. But right now, it comes across as just... <laughs> hurts you normally it hurts you as much as a real arrow would hurt a regular person if they were shot in the stomach yeah and literally and, very and then they heal it. yeah and then and they still have magic healing powers too like i know they heal like normal people but then they have like special medicine you know so it's like that negates that so unless it's instantly fatal then it's like they're virtually immortal and i'm like yeah uh, why didn't you just win the first time um, you know what it is too it's like so clearly like tolkien's elves but like more powered you know what i mean like it's so clear that the fey are just fucking elves but she's calling them the fey like they don't even have fucking wings like some of them have wings like the bat boys who come in in the second book well, the high fey don't have but the wings. high fey don't have wings so they're just literally they're literally basically tolkien's elves except for at least tolkien like gave his elves you know mortal flaws like they could be killed by stuff <laughs> You okay, know, like, okay, Tolkien's elves actually had a very dark and sordid history full of betrayal, murder, and weird sex stuff. People forget that. <laughs> Don't forget that. Uh, that's uh, true, stuff. but I'm saying you could stab one and it would fucking die. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, they weren't like these overpowered, practically invincible, write yourself into a hole kind of like beings. Well, yeah, I guess my point is like, okay, by the, uh, about the winning the first time thing, part of the backstory is that there was apparently some really big war a long, long time ago between humans and Fae that was what created yeah. the wall. So, like, they're living separately. We're going to circle back to that in the future. Yes. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I the, also the have... The mask a... thing I mentioned earlier. Yeah. So there's some kind of weird magic. 
uh, that like binds them to their faces. Like they literally just can't take them off. They call it the blight. It's a weakening of magic for the past fifty some years, and that's all we really know about yeah, it. Yeah, and there's like then they're worried it'll, it's gonna grow. Um, I'm actually kind of unclear as to what the drawbacks are. I know the mask thing sucks, but it doesn't seem to interfere with their lifestyle all that much. It's the more the implication behind the mask, which is a constant reminder that later it's gonna be yeah, like when the, the timer's the, up. Literally, yeah. it is. You look in the mirror every day and you're reminded of the horrible things that I'm going to do to absolutely everyone if you don't do what I require. And we'll get back to that in a bit. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, Feyre gets all this um, really kind of mind-screwy information that, like, really... Mind-screwy. Barely considers any of it. Barely. Uh, again, also doesn't... I mean, not so much doesn't, like, consider. She's definitely shocked by the whole can lie and can not be killed by iron thing. Mm -hmm. Which puts a damper on some of her plans. But also, like we said, doesn't really look too deep into... Does that mean all the things you said before were untrue? And now I doubt everything you just said. Um... Kind of just bums around his house for a while. He tries to yeah. offer her some things to make it more comfortable, which again should be seen as even more suspicious given the context <laughs> of why she's supposed to be there. You're my prisoner, but oh, also you're God. free to do whatever you want. And also, can I do anything to make your stay more comfortable, ma'am? Yeah. <laughs> I hear you like painting. <laughs> um, I, I don't. I don't want to call things too clearly, but how she thinks Tamlin looks as human, like I said, he's kind of blonde and buff and hot. Yeah, um, so that's really all you gotta know. Never trust uh, a toehead, isn't that right, Ronnie? <laughs> shut the fuck up. One of the that things uh, that I caught on with, um, this is kind of a thing I see in a lot of uh, uh, so these sort of like new adult romanticy books is like noticing when people are hot in times where it's really inappropriate to be thinking about how hot <laughs> they are. And my it's favorite like, part about SGM is her favorite, uh, her, her love of the scents. Oh yeah, it's it's a little. Yeah, he, he smells good. Like a, no, 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 no. I mean, when she, she, she's all hot and bothered, he can. Yeah, he can smell arousal like an animal. It's actually not as sexy as you think. Um, it's so... nobody thinks it's sexy. It's not sexy at all. In fact, okay. it's very, very odd. Um, so just kind of sort of like the whole like again like, <laughs> nose and real hot was inappropriate to think about. It's like she does seem to like think you know understandably that he's sexy and like has buff and is like really like you know sort of chiseled male fantasy a bit and i'm just it thinking is a fantasy book. like this i see there's a lot in a lot of books but in my case here i'm but this is the one we're talking about is that like this man is your jailer and threatened violence against your family like not less than 24 hours ago i feel like that should be a real turnoff. Like, like <laughs> it's like, wow, those muscles rippled. Like the way like, the Tommy said he would kill my little sister if I didn't come away with him to be his slave in retaliation for a murder I committed prior. Are those the uh, muscular arms that would have choked me out in front of them? <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking god! But like seriously, like, though, I'm playing my blood debt to this like chiseled man beast or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, uh, oh, it's so funny. Okay, so again, I'm kind of skipping probably a lot, but um, like he offers her painting supplies. She's kind of like all like, no, I don't want your stuff. You are literally my jailer. Despite Please. being nothing but incredibly understanding and nice to me the entire time. Which is actually, again, even more suspicious when you think about it for even 10 <laughs> seconds. But we're not thinking about it for too long. Yeah, you have to remember, you're trying to bring brains, logic, and even a modicum of, like, of thinking to Feyre, who is just not not that character. She's really, really stupid. She's really stupid, and everyone really hates her. Like, obviously, like, Lucian hates her. Tamlin is, like, walking Lucian's up to her. Lucian's like, amused by her, actually. No, Lucian tries to fucking get her killed. He does, but, I mean, like, he at least thinks it's In a good funny. Way. Like, he at least thinks it's funny. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, ha, 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 I almost killed her. Yeah, he thinks she's, like, a toy. Speaking of, so what happened in that part was... Um, Favor's just walking around outside. She's sulking because she wants to escape, but she can't. Um, and then so then Favor's like, no, no, no. Then uh, Tamla's like, hey, 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 you want to hang out with me today? And she's like, no. And he's like, oh, okay. And so he kind of no. like shuffles off to the side. And then she's like walking around. She sees Lucian and she's like, can I join you? And he's like, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> so I, I love how dejected Tamlin gets every time oh. she rejects him, like not remembering that you fucking kidnapped her. Like, with his tail between his legs, literally. Yeah. He's like, oh, I wonder why she's so pissed off. Like, I fucking I mean, wonder why. Yeah, he's kind of got that whole alpha male hero thing in that, like, 
He gets very angry at like very normal responses to his behavior. Which is, I don't want to be around you because you kidnapped me. Yeah, I'm here against my will. I did not come here voluntarily. I don't want to be around you. You have no reasonable expectation to expect me to want to be around you. I literally hate your entire species so much so that I killed one of you knowing full well that it probably could be one of you. And I did it anyway just because I fucking hate you guys so much. Like You've been um, a blight on my entire uh, race of person. We fought a genocidal war against you a long time ago and still are kind of upset about it. Uh... So, uh, moving on, uh, by the way, uh, the genocidal war was because the humans were slaves, uh, and they're kind of still beef, I uh, have beef about Which, that. Which, oh my god, so the implications about the slavery thing is just fucking insane to me. Yeah. It, it, it's so, please stop writing things about slaves, please. Please, authors, stop writing things about slaves. Like, it, it it's just so uncomfortable in every context. Like, I don't like it. And especially when you're framing the fae as because it's so clear she does right like and that's okay because this is a fantasy novel so in some ways as a you know perfect piece of the demographic she's trying to cater to i'm okay with living in the the fantasy of oh it's so cool to be a magical being right like it's okay to indulge in that that being a magical being is better than being a human like we've we've done the whole being human is great with all the vampire stories that have Mm -hmm come out so i'm okay with her indulging in like being a fairy is awesome with the, all the fairy powers she's created but at the same time like it's just so fucking weird to have people be slaves have there be a genocidal war between the two sides between the north and the south between the north and the fucking south and then have the oppressors be portrayed as like the superior way more awesome race of people it's just they're not superior as noah said they're just humans but better but better <laughs> it's so uncomfortable like so, yeah um that's not okay and i almost forgot about that until you fucking brought it up that that is that is in fact part of the backstory completely yeah. glossed over it when i first read the book because i didn't even completely understand the world building but upon second reading and now that you're mentioning it again I totally forgot about that. That's fucking wild. Yeah, so, like, we're gonna kind of circle back around to that whole plot point later as it becomes more relevant. Uh, yeah, this... t- when we get to the actual cause of the blight. Yeah, that's that's a whole section of the book that, honestly, probably goes a little longer than it needed to, but we're gonna circle back around to that. That's the well... best part of the book. <laughs> probably. Uh... <laughs> Definitely. Um, so I will fight you on that. I- either way, yeah, um... So she's... That she's out in the woods with Lucian, and they're chatting, trying to be friendly, and then all of a sudden she's like, shut up! Um, I think they're attacked by some kind of weird <laughs> That was mo- a weird, uncomfortable silence. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, exactly I'm trying to recall was. what happens next It in was that. the bogue. It was like, um... They're oh, like yeah, these yeah. creatures that they, they can't hurt you unless you turn and acknowledge that they're there. Mm. So he's like, shut up! And so then they're just like, going by and the book are like Feyre, Feyre look at me, Feyre Okay, right, also the blight means there's weird monsters running around um, Yes. Some of them, by the way as an author, I really wish she described them better because I until I watched Carrie Can Read's video and she literally just put random pictures up to represent like the various things like the surreal and the bones <laughs> and stuff, I literally could not, I was so fucking confused as to what they were. I was like, I can't even picture this thing what even is this? I think she picked the perfect representation of the surreal, which, oh, is, yeah. <laughs> which is that thing from... Um, <laughs> from what's the movie? Um, oh, my gosh. It's like a Miyazaki film. No, it, it is. It's the um, the one where she goes to the, the magic world. Oh, my gosh. What the fuck is it? Somebody will comment. It, it was, it was one that know. Lou and I really liked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that somebody will let us know. But, yeah, it was yeah. really funny. I, I got so confused like reading this i was like what even are these things <laughs> so um, i'm so glad carrie put like a visual to it um so uh, sort of i guess uh long story short um i think she comes to learn about something called a surreal where we just mentioned it yeah it's this kind of lower f- type of fey that has lots of knowledge and you can learn things from it literally has all the knowledge in the universe yeah and nobody thought to you know 
fucking do something with that. And she's like, she turns to, to Lucian. She's like, hey, Lucian, is there like a fairy that exists that I can go and ask all the questions and they like can't tell me like the wrong thing and like they can't lie to me even if I wanted them to lie to me. And then they like had to tell me the truth no matter what. He's like, oh, yeah, you mean the surreal? And then he's like really ridiculously specific on how to capture it. And I'm like, you do know that she's going to go try to capture it now. And she does. Yeah, um, she tries to capture the surreal. It's Which, weird spirit <laughs> thing. If it's so fucking easy to capture the thing that can literally answer every question in the entire goddamn world, why why wouldn't more people just have one? Why wouldn't you just keep one? I mean, they're in... clearly okay with slavery. Why don't you just fucking keep one? <laughs> oh, boo, 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 boo. We're not gonna talk about slavery. <laughs> saying them not me um, <laughs> i am using their own logic like okay so I, it kind of fills her in on more and more some back um stuff about the ongoings of the world it's like there's like another fairy kingdom called highburn and has a really big mean king who's the big bad evil guy yes and i think he's the reason all the bad stuff is happening we're learning about um, the lore. Uh, he said he it said he sent um spies into the other fairy courts mm-hmm so we can just sort of, you know, keep an eye out for them and learn what to hap- what's going to happen. Um, you know, this book series quickly, like, fucking turns into Game of Thrones and shit, like, as we get further into the series with all the political intrigue. Yeah, he thinks humans are dumb and should be slaves again, and he's a really bad, bad guy. Really bad, bad um, guy. Bad boy, so before Feyre can learn bad too boy. much about what the hell is going on with that, uh, she gets conveniently attacked by some of the bad monsters rolling by the woods. And One of my Tamlin. favorite parts is the Surreal's like, stay with the High Lord, Feyre. And she's like, God, fuck it. He's not just like like a like a High Fey. He's the High Lord. He's like, he runs this place. Like, this is his. She was like, oh, he has a beautiful, massive estate. He must be pretty, like, high ranking. Like, yeah, like, he is the high ranking. Yeah, like, he's, like, in charge of this court uh, it's he's the, he's basically uh, king of he's king of the spring the spring <laughs> king of spring is yeah, he's the, him yeah, he's the king of the <gasps> spring. what because it rhymed did you just no. <laughs> like what what, what no. are you what's the what's the what was with the goes into the hades and persephone next book oh i didn't even fucking notice that <laughs> Okay, that's actually pretty clever. That's actually uh, really clever. I'm I mean, so sorry. I, 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 I kind of got spoiled <laughs> a line so in the second book uh, that uh, kind of makes that a little more clear. Uh, but not gonna, we're going to move past that. Um, look, I, I read a lot of fantasy, so I'm kind of in these circles a lot. So they're kind of right. I was spoiled a little bit for some of the big events that happened in the subsequent books. Don't worry. I'm sorry. I don't remember them quite well, so it's probably still going to be a surprise. But uh, I have a general outline of some of the big things going forward. Um, so, yeah, he saves her. Um, and he's... Lucian's like, I wasn't going to save you. But I did. <laughs> <laughs> but I got Tamlin, too. <laughs> I actually fucking hate you. <laughs> and I think you are a mistake and a bad idea. Which... For Which... I don't get why, because when you learn the spoiler, like, when you learn the twist later, Lucian has no fucking reason to to think this. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, if nothing else is a Hail Mary, like, so... Yeah, like, what's the what's the alternative, Lucian? Do you have a fucking better idea? <laughs> anyway, Lucian was the only one who was fucking tolerable in this in this court. I, I couldn't stand Tamlin, even from the beginning. And, Ronnie, you can back me up on this, because literally people, like... I know everybody's going to be like, that's totally not true. You definitely didn't think that. No, I fucking hated him from the beginning. From the beginning. Yeah. Um, So we mentioned that um, Tamlin was the the high lord of the spring. But what does that entail? I don't don't think we mentioned how the fairy world Prithian is distributed. Um, You you should explain it, Ronnie, since I think Noah doesn't care enough. (laughs) (laughs) I think the gist is that there's like different courts based on the seasons. And they all answer to a high king who's bad. No. (laughs) <laughs> no. <laughs> no very close but no so essentially it was once ruled collectively but then we don't know when or why or how but it stopped being ruled collectively this comes into play more in like the fourth book um uh court of silver flames yeah it was like a bajillion years ago yeah it was fifteen thousand years ago so um essentially the whole of prithian which is the um Oh, okay. We gotta pause it because Noah's oh, leaving. No. Oh, one second. You're an asshole. No, I'm not. <laughs> Nobody oh, 
my god, to hear that. Have I ever showed you my my Donald Duck impression? Yeah, like a million times. <laughs> Podcast. Have I showed you? <laughs> I, I I I don't even know what to say to you right now. That's my very the platypus one. And we're back. Okay. So. Thanks, Noah, for making that fucking weird. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. So it's I had a phone call. It's fine. We're good. So essentially, the, the Prithian, the lands of Prithian, 15,000 years ago, they were divided up into either the seasonal or the solar court. Seasonal being autumn, winter, spring, um, and, spring summer. and summer. Yeah. And then the solar being dawn, day, and night. So we just know about that distribution. We know that Tamlin is one of the seven of the big bads. So that makes his dedication and why he's taking the Bogue being around and like all these creatures slipping in like extra to heart. It's because it's literally because he's not strong enough to fend off and fight what he should be able to fight. He's also like hundreds of years old acting like he's a fucking 15 year old boy, but it's cool. But it's, it's all good in the proverbial hood because we've got. Feyre here who is here for whatever reason and she keeps hearing these little things like um she like overhears little conversations like Lucian's like come on dude like stop dragging your feet yo you like do something <laughs> he's nice. giving him a bro pep talk he's and then like, Tamla comes up this isn't good for you and then Tamla comes up to her he's like you look clothed and she's like what the fuck does that mean and he's like you look he, like, can't be nice to her no matter how much he tries. He, like, he, like, it looks like he's trying to swallow a dagger when he's trying to be nice to her. I'm like, dude. Yeah, it's like he's clearly being framed a bit like this weird male fantasy a bit. But, like, at the same time is n- not suave at all. <laughs> he, it seems, like, baffled at Instead the thought of, being of suave, like, basic he's Olay. interactions. He's Olay. <laughs> It's like, and it, like we learned that he's like definitely been like starved for contact with other people for a while, but also had presumably many more centuries of like talking to thinking beings. And I just feel like he should be able to talk to a pretty girl with something resembling basic decency. That's asking or, for too much. And it's... And it's enough. We, we learned that this is like a, a lot is very dependent on his ability to get this girl to like him because this is a Beauty and the Beast. So obviously there's some kind of outside incentive. So I feel like you should be able to like give her a compliment without it being like pulling teeth. It's well, you know, when he does give her one of those compliments, she finally is like, he's like, what do you want? What do you want? I can give you anything. I'm like, I'm, I'm high fate. I can do whatever you want. And she's like, I like to paint. And he's like, I'll give you anything you want. I'll reopen the gallery. I'll give you paints. I'll give you so many paints. <laughs> all the paints. I have all the paints. I went, I'll give you the full last rainbow. Roy G. Biv, <laughs> you got her, baby. <laughs> you got it, babe. So he gives her Roy G. Biv and an art gallery. Yeah. And then um, he also grills her. He's like, mm, very unsuavely, very Olay like. He's like, so is there anyone that you. Wow, wow. You love? <laughs> it's so unappealing. And she's like, yeah, there's this one guy back home. Like, we used to, like, you know. Yeah, we boned, you know. We, like, we used to, like, roll in the hay. And they did because he was, like, a He farmer. was literally, like, a farmer He was shit. a farmer's son. <laughs> and, and so then Tamlin's all mad. He's like, <clears throat> well, did you love him? Yeah, like, he's inexplicably jealous for no goddamn reason. Did you love him and she's like nah we just fucked he's like did you <laughs> love i wish you guys could see her face right now <laughs> did you she love anyone so else and she's like nah fam i'm pretty like lonely uh, and I he's mean, like, like good I was, I was too busy being a starving peasant uh <laughs> he's like you good you saw no, that yeah. when you threatened my family in our hovel you broke into <laughs> You know, the kind that you and your people have let starved and die for, like, centuries now? He's like, good. (laughs) And then he leaves, and he's like, I'm going to go get you those paints now, girl. Bye. He he has to realize how off-putting that is, right? (laughs) It's like, No, he doesn't. I don't think he does. But he redeems himself, because, like, you know what? I was on the side of, like, the humans versus the fairies. There were some fairies on the humans, so at least I'm a good guy. Also, again, That's that's, a point of contention for Noah, actually. That's that's also a a really big problem for me. Yes, okay, apparently way back in the huge, like, human slave rebellion that fractured the world or whatever, 
some of the Fae uh, chose the human side because they were like they had like human friends and loves and all that. I'll make my life. And a um, disregarding the incredibly horrifying power imbalance any of those relationships would have had, given yeah. that like, humans were a literal slave species uh, <sighs> under the thrall of the Fae in general. I feel like kind of like again leans into this weird insistence that the Fae are better than humans in every way. Was like, they couldn't <laughs> even win without her help. God, yeah. fuckers! Oh, you guys fucking suck. No, you I mean, couldn't like, even do uh, anything without they, us. They joke, but like <laughs> but Tamlin no, and Lucian make it clear that yeah, that's actually very much the case. It's like <laughs> yeah, humanity would have stood no chance in any attempt to free itself without Fae intervention. Because so we're that much better. We spark when we got big dicks. Which is like the opposite of what you'd think would be like an inspiring story. It's like the story of like the oppressed fighting off for the name of freedom for them and their families. But also like they could never have done it at all. They were doomed to failure. It was a, t- it was a doomed well, endeavor. Were. It was a lost cause. We're really laying it on oh, no. thick, but they were. Uh, oh no, the implication uh, is so bad. I, I can't I, believe you just I, said I don't, that. I don't, I don't really believe that there's any kind of real like analogous real life American Civil War like analogs. I'm no, people saying. who try to do that are really really stretching yeah they're it. stretching but at the same time it's not well, like... like i guess the point is it, 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 it kind of like they say it takes away the whole narrative weight of the that humanity banded together to fight the fae and it just makes this like i guess this idea that it's just like really shilling her these characters and it's like i feel like the, if there's meant to be any kind of balance in the world it's that humanity has numbers and ingenuity fae have magic and strength it's like it makes no sense that there was ever a, like a detente. It's like why weren't the Fae just winning anyway? Why yeah, you'd no- think maybe if there was like this ultimate war because what I thought they were setting up in the first book, at uh, when I was first reading the series, and then I was totally wrong. Was <laughs> you were very wrong. Like was that I thought they were setting up like basically that what Noah said that the humans have something that the Fae don't have. And this ultimate war that was inevitably going to happen with Highburn, no, like they, they needed the humans. They just want some slaves. <laughs> they just want slaves. No, like I'm uh, a like slave. I hate you right now. Like literally, <laughs> I literally thought that what would happen was that the Fae were going to realize because Feyre is like a former human. Because spoiler alert, she like becomes a fae later on in the Boy, series why are you spoiling the book i'm sorry she just it's just something that i have to say and it's gonna happen no, and most of the people won't. listening to this probably have read the book honestly but the thing is if i thought because she has the knowledge as somebody who's a human or a former human that she's gonna convince the fae that what they need to win the war against highburn would be people like would be humans and the fae would be like what that's fucking crazy you know like the humans suck and she would have to be the one to convince them like no no you don't understand the humans have something that the fae don't have because they're they don't have weak magic. arms you know <laughs> weak arms <laughs> no spine <And> broken wills <laughs> broken wills like i thought that would be like a cool sort of like tie into you thought but, wrong yeah bitch. i thought i thought so wrong i thought so wrong i thought the wall was gonna come down in like a really like cool way like both like both physically and metaphorically especially but considering the two Noah, sides of the wall are happens. magic which is intangible and a real wall which is tangible and it would have been a whole cool narrative thing but apparently not i was wrong you were very wrong <laughs> and okay um so yeah like i guess my like like this is like what all those points I was making lead up to is my sort of issue with this shilling of the innate superiority of the Fae. Like uh, it's really a story. Like they said, it's a story about like, a girl who becomes a Fae and this is meant to be a purely to her benefit. It's like everything that was human about you, everything that like was good about you, that you earned this right, that impressed us all so much that you were able to become one. Is like, yeah, we need to get rid of that because that was the weak part. That was, <laughs> yeah, that part that, sucked. Like, We're like, rebuilding you. Like, that was the part that needed to be let go of to make you better. Like, Little not Miss like, rebuilt from the inside out. It's like, not like the enduring capacity of the human spirit to endure in spite of hardship. It's like the innate weakness of humanity in the face of powers greater than itself. Yeah, it turns out you just needed fucking magic and immortality, and that's all you really... That's yeah, all that, you that, know. That's, um, that's what you were missing. Yeah, that was what was wrong with you. Things that you are not intrinsically born with. As in, if you don't get those, you're fucked. <laughs> if you're not born special, you're never well, going to be. I mean, yeah, most definitely. fantasy, and, a, and this series especially, really makes no secret of being super okay with, like, <laughs> nepotism. Well, yeah, that, but also, like, nepotism yeah. and monarchists yeah. and, like, 
All right, so um, where were we like? The in next the plot? big thing that happens is she wakes up from a nightmare. She hears a lot of screaming. She goes downstairs, and then there's a um, a blue fairy whose wings are ripped from it, ripped from whence they came, saying like, "Oh, she took my wings! She took my wings!" Everyone was like running around, and Lucian looks like he's gonna vom in the corner, and Feyre kind of like just you know talks this nice guy to to his death. Cheery. She, yes. she comforts him it's in his stuff. last moments. Uh, yeah. And he's like, why the fuck would you do that for, like, Faye that you hate? And she's like, I just don't want... I don't think that's right that anyone would be miserable. Suffer alone. And then she actually apologizes for killing Andrus, and he's like, oh, I... The wolf, the, the, <laughs> Which... Okay. The wolf was named Andrus, no. by the way. <laughs> she could have, like, literally just say, I thought it was a wolf. Yeah, like, why did you admit that you... Why do you feel like you need to apologize for killing a wolf? What? Well, also, the thing is, too, it's, like, in the context, at least from Feyre's perspective, again, there's a twist later, but, like, at this point in time in the book, like, she thought she did something so bad. Like, you killed Tamlin's, like, loyal friend and companion and your biggest, and you're like, whoops, <laughs> like, I'm so sorry. Like, you know, watching somebody die in front of me with their wings ripped to shreds really made me realize that, like, maybe killing Andros was... Wrong. But she didn't know it was Andrus. <laughs> it's just funny. Like, yeah. Well, okay, she kind of did, but didn't. You know what I mean? She like, most definitely did. It, it crossed her mind. And that then when he, he didn't was a turn, fae. then she was like, oh, it's not a fae. Yeah, but she knew very well that there was a good, like, 50% chance that it could be a fae. She did, but we're going to kind of move past that because she got some coins from it. Remember? She got she got oh, to yeah, get, like, did. Nesta new riding boots, and Elaine got some shit, and Favor got nothing because that's how it worked. Moving on, what happens is the next day they all go for a nice ride to see the beauty of the glens, and we find out about Lucian's backstory. Noah, do you remember Lucian's backstory? Yeah, he's from like the Autumn Court. He's right? the son of the Autumn King. Yeah, and he's like a dick, right? Uh, yeah. Like doesn't he have like Autumn Court King is an asshole? Yeah, he doesn't have like a couple of sons, and he's like shitty to all of them. Or something. Yeah, and those those sons are sadistic. Like, absolutely sadistic. Yeah, like, the Lucian, the one who, like, set up uh, Freya to die by proxy to death bat monsters. Uh, he's the <laughs> nice one in the family. Yeah, somehow. Uh, and so, yeah, he's just kind of, like... And his his lover was from, like, the um, like the lower class, and his dad didn't approve. So he actually executed her and then went to go kill Lucian, and Lucian made his way to the spring court. So he, like, watched the woman he loved most, most in the world die, and now the entire autumn court hate, hates him. Well, they weren't mates, so who fucking cares about her? But, like, he did. Yeah, yeah ma- mates <laughs> are a thing. Screw your trauma, Lucian. Notice how in a few books he doesn't give a shit about that ex-mate? <laughs> completely erased from his memory yeah like mates are also a thing and it's like more than just being in love and it's kind oh, of this weird it's, it's kind of yeah, a like, soulmate thing and i'm really not on, on board with it it's like kind of tamlin's ch- parents were mates and there's like this rose garden at the at the, like the palace for them and they hated each other mm. ah yep that was loud that was uh, one. <laughs> so uh yeah i don't know the mates thing i just find it confusing and not very great. much so um so yeah um i don't have a problem with the mates thing as much as you might think i i got it it's just i wish she would stop using it in fucking every book she writes yeah you know like her it's her signature her signature is big dicks and mates i know but i she's writing the mcu now okay i know (laughs) i i just hate it like i i actually think the mates thing works really well in akotar but because I'm doing Throne of Glass at the same time with you, and it means a different just, thing. And she, I know it means a different thing, but it kind of doesn't. Like it, that's it's, what I mean. If they were more distinct, yeah. Like, if they distinctly were distinctly different, very different, then maybe I would be able to be on board with it. But I just feel like having experienced it the way she explains it in this world, I feel like this is the only world where it actually does make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do think she explains it very well, actually, to her credit. But I'm so sick of fucking seeing it now. <laughs> it's literally in every single it's one of every her book. books. And I don't like it. It comes like up in it. Crescent City, too. Because here's the thing, right? Like, and this kind of ties into what Noah was complaining about, about not really, like, exploring the idea that human ingenuity and will and, like, the strength to carry on is really what carries the day in her story. It's like, the whole mate thing just takes away i think so many of her characters autonomy it does because it makes them instead of it being like 
I'm not going to use this example because he hasn't finished, gotten to the point yet, but, um, uh, no, you're very correct because as soon as like you are intrinsically tied with another person, you are no longer like yourself. You are their mate. You are their property. You are mm. there. It's so degrading and I get it. Like a lot of people enjoy it. And for some people, it wets their whistle. But in the fantasy sense, when you go from having, like, really strong MCs who don't need no man or doing all these things on their own to then, like, crying and sobbing because their mate is exposed to some danger. It's like, yeah, I get it. But, like, I thought that you were a bit, you know, a bit different than this, Sarah. Well, I also like the idea that people just are have the ability to choose the person that they love. You can and, only accept the mate bond or deny it and yeah. then never experience happiness. Yeah, and the thing is, and, and I get where she's going in this series where, like, there's certain characters who I'm not going to name, who in other characters who I'm not going to name, where they're mates, but she, it's clear she's setting up the idea that they're not going to end up together to prove a point that not all mates, like, end up together. But at the same time, it's like, but, but then, it's then like I'm not okay with like, that. It's supposed to, like destroy their their sense their sense of being to the core like we haven't seen anyone deny the mate bond yet because it's supposed to be like literally a dejection of a second part of yourself well and the thing is too once you've introduced the idea in my head as a reader that people who are mates are intrinsically like connected supposed to be together then you as a reader no matter how much you want to as an author make a point I'm like well now they have to be together because now it's like well you've just told me that this mating thing is such a huge fucking deal now it kind of sucks you can deny like yeah like it, it just kind of sucks I to the damn on, just not have them be together so I almost wish it wasn't introduced at all because it feels yeah. like the characters aren't choosing a partner because that's who they want to be with based on their flaws and their personality and their struggles and their strengths. Speaking of their struggles and strengths, Feyre is illiterate. Oh, yeah. Feyre is illiterate. Yeah. That she is actually a problem. can't read, mm -hmm. which is a big problem. And Hamlin finds out, and that gets to this point in the book where we're at. And um, so essentially he's like, oh, I can teach you how to read. And she's like, what do you mean? I don't need to learn how to read. Shut up. And then, um, so eventually, once they're starting to get closer, because now they're getting closer, you know, because they, like, went swimming in a pool together. Um, because uh, they went swimming I, in a I, pool, I, I, I think it's more as like, you do. I think it's more like she went swimming in a pool, and then he showed up uninvited and just kind of insisted in walking in naked and getting very close to her. <laughs> and I, honestly, like... I it, don't even remember that. No, no, yeah. no. They went to the, when they were in the Glen talking about Lucian. She like he's like, yeah. Well, Lucian witnessed his lover die, and then favorite's like, let's go swimming. <laughs> yeah. Well, moving on from that. Oh. Um. Yeah. I. I. I so I don't remember this very well. Uh. So moving past. Yeah. After the whole Faye with its wings ripped off thing. He's trying um, to teach her how to read and all that bullshit. Teach her to read and all that. Um. You know, there's a lot of references to the, who the her was who tore off his wings. Yeah. There's an. Um, there's an invisible person. And after they come back from the woods one day when he gives her a lot of dirty poems mm -hmm. that she doesn't know how to read because she's illiterate but it, it's very 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 sexual yeah kind of she comes back and there's like this person that they're talking yeah, you ever to. think it's like kind of just giving porn to a blind person and as a joke <laughs> it's like haha ha, i know you're doing looking at a sexy thing but you don't realize it i mean that seems kind of like it seems a little weird. assaulty to it be seems honest a lot of like <laughs> belittlement too yeah i would like, feel really offended if i was her yeah it seems a little which is why she didn't want him to uh, it's real dicey yeah again like that's especially because not... he calls it a shortcoming yeah oh yeah well, again, yeah, yeah, also he likes to belittle her. It's, he's, he, he's like the master of negging. It's really uncomfortable. And it's like very uh, subtle. Like you don't notice the entire book until you're like rereading. You're like, oh, you're an asshole. <laughs> you kind of a jerk face and I don't like you. But um, yeah, um, so they come back and in the garden, Tamlin and Lucian are talking to this invisible thing. Mm -hmm. And Feyre can't hear. She's hiding behind a bush. And it's like, we're almost out of time. And he's like, we're going to get you. And she's going to get you. And Amarantha is going to get exactly what she wants. And that's the first time we hear about who the she is. Yeah, Amarantha. Um, she's the big bad guy. The uh, big bad guy. The bad boy. I'm bad not sure if they clarify what her role is just yet. No, but they to, don't. Um, I think in the gist, she's like evil. She's evil. evil and bad, she's and we essentially don't like her, some and that's, local, the, she's, that's the tea. She's essentially some local warlord who just declared herself queen of everything. Uh, well, she was actually one of Highburn's, like, 
emissaries who who, yeah, she, who took she works, over. She works for the big bad evil king. Um, yep. Which weird implication that the lesser evil person in this series is the woman, and then we have the big bad king <laughs> to deal with. Yeah. Okay, so unrelated to that, there's gonna be this big solstice festival. It's like this weird pseudo pagan bacchanal thing. It's called uh, the fire. It's like a fire night. It's called Column Nye. Oh yes, oh. Column Nye was my favorite part of the book. I got so confused. Um, he tells her. I, I forget if he tells her she has to come or no. if she can't come. No, she cannot come. No, she's not allowed. To she's come. not. He's allowed. very emphatic about it. Actually, he's like, "You cannot come," and she's like, "Ooh, maybe I should go. This yeah. sounds like fun." Because... Even though this is a place where people murder pretty easily without a second thought, I'm gonna go to this thing he told me was explicitly dangerous. And um, she just so... decides to follow the drums. Yeah, she follows the beat of the drums to this weird like tent <laughs> fire bonfire <laughs> thing. <laughs> It's, it's 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 like woods. It's like Woodstock meets Burning Man. It it's, is, yeah, pretty. But, but with, with sex, yes, more but sex with, with weird, uh, uh, because culty sex. Tamlin, who's the lord of the land, this is when all the bad guys come out to play, and he needs to make the ground fertile by spilling his seed inside of a maiden. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So there's, there's <laughs> it's this... so weird, even you explaining it, and That's I get why it. I, made the noise. I get it. I get it. Like it has internal logic. I, but at the same time, it's so archaic. Why? <laughs> it's so archaic uh, look, to go from like I'm fighting on the side of slavery to I'm gonna fuck a woman to spread my seed metaphorically. Yeah. It's while so fire weird. is going yeah, on in the background. With fire. <laughs> so yeah. But with um, fire. My thing here is that like I think uh, he also Tamlin is also basically a werewolf. He turns into that weird monster thing semi randomly. Just a beast. Uh yeah okay whatever. <laughs> uh, one could maybe say a beast okay so uh, yeah she favor goes she kind of gets glimpses of some of the weird shit that goes down um i forget if she, i think she oh runs... but she runs into somebody is well, that when this happens there are like three fey who are like where are you going you piece of meat and they're obviously like trying Cat to like her they want to eat her and then like this guy she bumps into serious this guy. stranger he's like there you are i've been looking for you yeah, and she like describes him as the most devastatingly the most handsome man. man she has ever made. Uh, again, yeah. kind of another example of like inappropriate times to realize someone is hot. It's like I'm about to be killed. Um, I just sex a man. Okay, I agree, but also disagree in this context because if you're just walking and you bump into someone who literally looks like a Greek statue come to life, she you was, would fucking notice. She was almost murdered slash gang raped. I feel like <laughs> that was not the time to like catch on to like that the next man you ran into was so hot. It's like, like yeah. Like, like it's a bit of like like I feel like I'm like being doused in ice water. Like what? But um so he he like kinda like shoes the other people away. He's obviously a high fay and he's then, obviously gonna be an important character because you don't just describe someone as like the most, the most beautiful, beautiful man, man you've ever met or seen and he's not gonna become important later. And so then he sends Sarah her... J. Moss likes kinda like kinda likes doing that. Uh, I did read the first Crescent City book and that is full of people commenting on how hot the main character is and it going nowhere. But that's the main. What other book people, did you read? That's other people commenting on the will, main we, character. We will discuss this at length. What later. book did you read? No, they definitely talk about the main character. We'll talk about this later. I'm they sorry. They talk about it, but it doesn't just do. They, nothing happens because. But of you'll it. see why. It's in the next. <laughs> okay, I don't know what you're talking about because I haven't read that book. <laughs> anyway, she goes back up to the mansion after the hottest man she's ever seen saves her, and she's in her room. And then later, she hears the drum stop, and she's like. I'm kind of hungry. I want to go for a cookie. So she goes downstairs, Idiots. gets a cookie, and she comes back up, and she's like cornered in the hall by like didn't learn her lesson by literally by Tam Tom. Literally didn't fucking learn her lesson. Like no. went to Calumni, almost got gang raped despite being told to literally lock herself in her room, and then still, after getting saved by this beautiful man, to her luck, she goes out of her room again. Mm-hmm. Fucking idiot. <laughs> Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice fucking set yourself no, on no, fire no. It's bitch fool me once shame on you fool me twice also shame on you because i'm a dumbass <laughs> and so he like gets really close he's like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's all like sniffing he's like, her he's like I, I smelled you there and you weren't there i tried to look for you but you weren't there i wanted to fuck you but you weren't there let me tell you and what other things i wanted to do i wanted this. to fuck you so hard and then he bites her yeah uh, and I'm, she's turned on by she's it. so into it and he's yeah. like it's very <sighs> odd Ooh, she's into it well i mean it's uh, it, yeah i feel like they're actually like they're, they're joking but it's actually a lot worse than that it's like yeah he was about to like, like rip her clothes off he's like clearly like out of his mind high on the weird sex magic, magic. of the ritual thing he was uh, in the epitome of an afterglow 
Yeah. Uh, I don't not even an afterglow. It's more like in the middle of a psychotic episode. It's like, <laughs> he's, yeah, like that's clearly, he's clearly not in his right mind. Uh, he said, like, I was I could smell you and I was really angry that I couldn't find you. So I think he got violent at one point. Yeah, he pushed he her against to, the wall and bit her. No, 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 I mean, not just that. I mean, like, during during his little ritual thing, he started to get pretty aggressive. Like, yeah. I forget how it's phrased, but he's, like he's, rough. he said he had Ew! to... Ew! Like, <laughs> He said he had to like basically settle for another one of the gr- maidens. Yeah. Or oh whatever, yeah, and he's like real the... pissed about it. So I went over the yeah. So there's a couple. There's like a selection of, of prospective maidens who he has to like. I'm saying this with a straight face. Spill his seed into. Uh, <laughs> his little and, like, semen out into he, the world. He picked bah, one. Bah, bah, bah. Uh, he made it sound like she was quite willing, but I got the implication from some of the way it's phrased that he was a little rougher than he probably would have been. I get the Unfortunately, implication... they kind of expect that, though, with him. I get the implication Sarah J. Mass is turned on by bodily fluids. Like, mm. it's it's a thing that comes up many times in her books. She's, like, really into it. Yeah. I don't I don't know. It's a thing. Everybody's got their thing. But she really, she's... like... She likes she's gardening really... a lot because she loves the seed. Yeah, she she really yeah. she's really into it. Um, no judgment, girl, but I I'm just letting you know I've noticed. <laughs> um, so <laughs> we, we see you, we saw you, and we don't know how to take it. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm not into it. But mo- moving a little bit cool. on. Okay, yeah, he bites her. It's weird. And then um, she's like, the next morning, she's like, I'm going to let them see what they did to me. And he goes downstairs. He's like, Don't look at me like that. I told you not to go outside of your room, and you did. You, this is on you. Lucian is me the whole first book, dude. Everything Lucian says, I just fucking agree with. <laughs> like, you're right, Lucian. She sucks. Uh, um, do they learn about who... She mentioned the hot guy from the party. No, not yet. So essentially, like, the next few chapters are just, like, them getting closer to each other. It is, um, like, she goes and has dinner with just Tamlin alone, and she wears a dress and not tunic and pants for the first time. Then they go out into the field, and Tamlin's like, wow, everything sounds so beautiful. They're singing up a nice tune, and she's Tale as old as time. (laughs) She's like, dude, fucking check your hearing. He's like, no, for real. So he gives her some kisses, and then she gets all the fairy magic, and he gives her the gift of sight, which comes into play because the next chapter, she wakes up and she's like, where did all these fairies come from? Because they just like appeared overnight. And so then she's like, what the fuck? Where's Alice, who's her like handmaiden? Because she sees this woman who looks like her skin is tree bark, and Alice is like, bitch, I'm right here. And she's like, Tamlin! She finds Tamlin, finds out that gift of sight kind of erased the glamour he had on absolutely everyone in the palace before. So now everyone looks like the fairy they are. And she realizes every time she's been trying to sneak around and do some sneaky shit, she's actually had a whole palace full of staff watching her going like... This is played for a joke, but I feel it should be much more horrifying than it is <laughs> It's like the reason I like you haven't been able to get away with anything is that I have in fact been spying on you. I I 100% have people tailing your movements. I have been infantilizing you to the highest degree, treating you like a toddler trying to sneak cookies out of a cookie jar. Like not only have I had a full house staff like actively like spying on you, doing your every attempt to flee my custody and return to your family who you love and miss. I have been letting you make these attempts anyway because I think it's funny to watch you try when I know you're powerless to get out of my power. It's like, Mm. That dude, that's actually like really fucked up when you think about it. It's, <laughs> it's like, like I find I find your th- your attempts at independence amusing. I will continue <sighs> to like just I, I literally just let you try and escape to return to your family because I thought it'd be funny to watch you fail. <laughs> it's like p- cue her her with like the Pink Panther theme, like do 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 do, and the other fair just like everyone just look at this girl her. trying to steal a fucking cookie. <laughs> like it's so funny, so dude. Stupid. So later that day, um, they find someone impaled um, with the mark of the night court on them. So everyone's like, oh, fuck. Oh, and yeah, the night court. Does everybody, does she know yet that everybody thinks the night court is evil? Yeah. Yeah. That's when, this is when he tells her that like the night court's evil. They're the worst. They literally just killed someone and put their head on a pike in our fountain. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, that, is, that, 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 that does sound pretty evil. I mean, maybe there's a context I'm missing, but like, I'm not sure. No, that sure is how, pretty evil. You're I'm, right. I'm not sure how else to interpret that. No, it's only interpretable as pure evil. Yeah. But to counteract that, because she loves, Sarah J. Mouse loves to do something horrific one chapter and one thing like super sweet the next one. So yeah. the next chapter is the summer solstice. She's very good at having the most horrific kind of violence come the fuck out of nowhere. Yep. 
So the next chapter is the summer solstice, and she's like, can I go to this one? And Tamlin's like, only if you don't drink the wine. What do you think Feyre does? She definitely drinks the wine. I mean, like, I, I, I can get a certain degree of not wanting to comply with someone who is functionally your captor, but I feel like there are certain, like, rules you should, like, Also, now they kind of, like, got this thing going on where they're both mutually attracted and they know that they kind of like each other. Yeah, despite the fact that they both... Neither of them have any reason to be attracted to the other apart from being hot. He can smell her arousal. I know, but... Why? But, but we don't know. Why would that make you hot? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, knowing somebody else is turned on by you doesn't make you automatically turned on by that person. Uh, especially in this context, that's horrifying. It's like, oh my god, the it's man terrifying. who has just confirmed I am wholly within his power and helpless to escape it and thinks I'm attractive. I, that's, like, very worrying implications. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, she drinks the wine, gets like... And then they cra- dance, and then it's She gets it's like, like crazy, night. super magic drunk, and uh, I don't think she even really fully remembers a big chunk of that night. Uh, she remembers this night because she doesn't have a lot of the wine. But she and Tamlin go off in the field, and they make out a little bit. They have their first real kiss. And again, night and fucking day, because the next chapter, they're all eating lunch, blah, blah, blah and then here Roma's like... <laughs> Oh, yeah, this is a great scene, actually. And they're like, hide Feyre! They glamour Feyre. She hides behind a curtain. And who walks in? Hot the, guy! The most beautiful <laughs> man she had ever seen. Random <laughs> hot guy! And the man from the party. And they start do, talking. Do, 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 and who is it, Noah? Do, do, do. Um, this fellow is named Resand. Um... I kept calling uh, him Rysand. Yeah, you're wrong. I do not trust him. He uh, is the night court man. He is the high lord of the night yeah, court. Yeah, he's also kind of an asshole. Uh, K- kind of? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so, let's rewind. He's uh, really an asshole. Yes, uh, he drips douchebaggery with his every breath. Uh, <laughs> and he's like... He's like just kind of a dick. Uh, like, it's actually like... He literally okay. goes there to anti- antagonize Tamlin. Like, you won't be able to break this. Time's almost up, you twerk like, back. Yeah, like, the reason I say he's an asshole is, like, again, I have been spoiled just by kind of proximity to the fantasy circle. So I get that he, like, a little bit of spoilers here. So, like, you know, please leave if you do. Like, without getting too spoilery, he is kind of brought around into the fold of the good guys a little bit. But I have hard time retroactively justifying his actions. Because yeah. A lot of the things he does in this book are merely purely motivated by nothing other than a sheer love of antagonizing people who are already like down. Like going to the spring port court to say there's no way that you're going to save yourself or anyone. The time is up. And then he realizes that there's a glamour on someone because he sees three place settings at the table and there's yeah. one, two. Oh, they also say something really important in this scene that, that implies he's a whore. that he's that he's Amarantha's basically paramour. Um, well, they say whore, but yeah. we, I'm going to say that they're they're in, like, a relationship, but, like, not. He's, yeah, he's, fuck, he's her paramour. He's fucking the, the, the big baddie girl. Yeah. And then they're which, fucking. He realizes yeah, that someone's bad. there. Yeah. He realizes someone's there. He breaks into Feyre's mind, terrifies the living daylight out of her. Which is not good. Which is, I think it's great. Um, <laughs> sarcasm. Oh, yeah. He has, like, mind powers, which I'm so curious when they like inevitably make this into a tv show or a movie like it's gonna be like a that's so raven kind of looking yeah like it's gonna go into her eye like like how are they gonna do like the mind shields and stuff it's so hard to even visualize as a book let alone just hope it's not like fucking bella swan like exuding like like, (laughs) illuminescence yeah like (laughs) and um so so eventually she says that um he's like what's your name tell me your name and instead of saying feyra for the one smart thing she's ever done is she says her name is Claire. Um, and then he's like, I'll see you under the mountain. And then he leaves. Also, he was able to get into like her deeper memories, but didn't catch her name. Correct. Because, yeah. you know, that would be too convenient. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, I get magical powers don't have any like hard, fast rules, but it does seem like a weird thing you would miss if you were like invading someone's mind. You missed their name. Well, yeah. here's the thing. I'm so okay. sick of fantasy writers not, like, having any rules about magic because there's so many times in this fucking series, and it's not just a Sarah J. Mass problem. It's a problem in general where I'm like, why can't magic fix this problem? Like, why? You're just making up fucking random mm-hmm. reasons on the spot why magic cannot fix this problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just feel like sometimes you're just Your saying magic. magic. is a literal never-ending well until you need it to end. Yeah, okay, it's, so, it's crazy. Um, like, okay, so, like, nothing interesting happens. Okay, then they decide to, like, send Feyre back to the human not realm. Not before they what, Noah? 
uh, they have sex first. I'm and I was what getting comes to... out of his fingers? Shing. Met light. Claws. Yeah, claws. he rips her okay. undies off with a claw. Okay, which <laughs> the way you said that. Oh my god. I was kind of actually getting to that. I wasn't oh, gonna like I'm skip. Sorry. I wasn't gonna like skip over everything. Okay, that so yeah. That was it. Though. They, they yeah. opt. The, okay, they decide to send her back, but they opt to have a like, sort of night together in a surprisingly tasteful sex scene. I must actually say, and that it was not. But <laughs> it wasn't. It was more. It's gra- the only one you're gonna get in the series. It wasn't bad. But it wasn't good. I mean, look, it's really, it's really the only time anyone has sex in this book. Um, which I, I really do notice something about Sarah J. Moss and what I've, a little I've been exposed to her. She kind of drips her books in sexuality, but has actually very little sex. Yeah, that's um, very much her style. Which I don't know. Like, I'm, I say this without like a trace of like lechery. It does seem a little off that they don't do it more because it just like. It just feels like and people in a relationship with every sexual encounter does not have to be magic. It just doesn't have to be like book three, my dude. It doesn't have to be like three. mind blowing. Book it's four. Like, what about book four? I very easily could have settled for like th- times where like I've said some of her stuff where it's like and then we just had sex. It's yeah, like, like uh, where's the handy? Like just give it. <laughs> <laughs> just give a nice handy. You could just say we had sex and move yeah. on. You know, like the the whole like uh, dark door, or whatever they call it. Yeah. So he, he fucks her, and she's like, that was so amazing. Oh, my gosh, your fairy dick wasn't too big for my little human pussy. And <laughs> and so the next morning, they wake up, and she's like, all right, now that I'm your lover, I stay here forever. And he's like, no, you're still going home. And I was like, <laughs> He's like, no, fuck off. And he's like, you were a good lie, but I like you. Actually, he says, I love you. And she's like, I can't say it back to him because I'm leaving the next day. And I feel like that's a really good spot to leave our first little pause. Oh, we're pausing now? <laughs> I want to go get strawberry shortcake. Okay, fine. We'll pause. We'll be right back after we have our strawberry shortcake. Ba-dum, ba-dum. You, how do you, you have to find a way to send me these so I can listen to them. They're just for me. There's no way to, like, email them or, like, attach them? They're massive them? files. They're, like, gigabytes and gigabytes. There's no way to do it. Where are we even going to put these? Beg me. Please. <laughs> Please what? <laughs> Please send me these. What will you do for me? Will you be my slave? No. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I wish you were. Yeah, well, you know, we we all want things. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a great back intro. Hi, guys. Hi. <laughs> I knew you were going to do some shit like that. Well, I did that shit, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, yeah. Noah's... Probably cost me our friendship. <laughs> Noah's not even here. Why would you even start this? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like we can segue back in, so that way he'll come sit down awkwardly, and I'm going to be like, hey, Noah. <laughs> you think people want to hear that? That's your, that was I your grand scheme? I want to hear that. That was the scheme you had? I want to hear that. He's literally going to take forever, because he's going to touch all the corners. God damn it. What? <laughs> So where were we? We were in a place. Let's reintroduce ourselves, though. Hi, I'm Noah. Hi, I'm sick of Ronnie's fucking <laughs> face. <laughs> well, she is staring across from me. So um, we were at the point where she just got ham-boned. And by ham-boned, I mean speared by his massive dong. And she's like, ooh, keep me as your sex slave. But actually, like, not really. And he's like, no, I'm still sending you home because I care about you and I don't want you to die. And then they fall asleep together and he says, I love you. And she doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. She kind of like very persistently <sighs> refuses to say it from the, in the lead up to their leaving. And it's kind of a big, uh, it, there's, there's a bigger reason why he wants her to say it back. But even in a like. Even in, like, a normal context where this guy is clearly fishing for you to say you love him back before you leave him forever, it's like, you, it feels like you could have thrown him a one. Just indulge him. <laughs> yeah, you know? like, you could have just bone. thrown him a bone. I mean, fuck. Like, that's so mean, I, too. I, I, I don't know. Um, that's selfish. You know, what, you know what I mean? Like, I, I get that what she's going for is for Feyre to, for fucking once, like, try to think, you know, and be like, you know, it's just too hard for me. But it's like, it's not fucking about you, So you're going to make this man who, like, it's always, like, a saying, isn't it? It's better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Yeah, like... You're not going to give him that moment of knowing that you loved him? Yeah, I mean, fuck, Feyre, use your brain for, like, 
point zero seconds and recognize that's that point zero he's seconds too long. Literally, like it, it was so infuriating because like the second that he was like telling her to leave, I was like, oh, he wants if it's for her safety. Like, of course it's for her fucking safety. Like, and I'm not even the one having sex with this man. And he says and that too. I already know that the reason he's doing this is not because he doesn't want her, and she's being so petty and fucking insecure. He doesn't want me. That's it's so ridiculous. annoying. I mean, like context clues Feyre. <laughs> it's not um, that difficult. So, yeah. It's like so she... then the next morning, he also throws her another bone and he says, I love you as the carriage is going away. And she's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was <laughs> oh, nice to know you, you too. <laughs> so she goes back home. Um, she meets she meets up with her family. They're rich now. Uh, apparently he <laughs> met, he meant his promise. He, de- he definitely did. He, like, Help! I don't know how he did it, but he used magic, I guess, to like set them up and get them deals with some of their old uh, merchant friends. Apparently, the lost ships that held the reason why the father was like excommunicated from the merchants, um, they they miraculously turned up, and so all the riches that were on those ships that got his literal kneecaps bashed in. I would have felt like really bad if I was a dad. Like, you yeah. fucking bashed my kneecaps in, and I'm right <laughs> goddamn here. <laughs> been here the whole time well like uh, uh, again that feels like another reason to be kind of upset it's <laughs> Can like you imagine being the guy who bashed in his kneecaps just like, like oh shit dude i'm sorry he just silently walks My into bad. the ocean well i mean not how not how loan sharking works but moving on uh, <laughs> i'm just saying fantasy world no what we can do with that I think world. their memories are the the memories of the family are a little vague as to like she went away uh, to a rich aunt. Yeah, like he kind of mind wiped them and, and planted false memories in their brains, which again worked for everyone but who? Uh, um, I think Nestra. I Nesta. Think. Nesta. Her name Nesta. 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 Okay, Nesta for some reason remembers what went down. And uh, Nesta was the cruel one, like the evil one. She was never evil. She was just kind of a bitch. Uh, like, she like refused to. Nice. <laughs> I've been waiting. Um, <laughs> she like refused to do anything. She was like mean to her sister. She only cared about Elaine. Like she was only ever nice to her. Yeah, Sweet we, yeah, Elaine. Yeah, we get it. We get it. There's people. Uh, they're human. Um, but uh, <laughs> what, Nesta's a bitch. Uh, I love Nesta. What, I guess, I, I've always loved Nesta. Like, uh, like my, my 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 point here is uh, my, is it Nesta? Oh, Nesta special. It's he can apparently mind white people <laughs> and implant false memories in their brains whenever he feels like it. And he did this to her family. Oh, That's but... deeply distressing. <laughs> I would be doubting every single encounter I've ever had with that man going forward. It's like, did I like him or do I just remember liking him as he mind raped me and implanted false memories of my liking him? Like, these are just things he can do casually. There is no follow-up on the implications of this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, um, those are good points, but have you ever considered? It's just sexy. <laughs> Like, I could have alleviated your family's suffering anytime I felt like it, but I didn't. And then I mind raped them and implanted false <laughs> memories to make it the, the pill go down easier. Yeah, yeah, he did that. Yeah, he did that for he sure. Did that. He 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 did Isn't that. Isn't he such a sexy man? <laughs> <laughs> what a heartthrob! I'm sorry, not a man. He's a male. Oh god. Uh, yeah. Okay. What she's, a heartbreaker. There's really an, a lot of animal terms in this. So, yeah, basically Nesta remembers it. You know, it. for somebody who's supposedly crafting love stories, she's very animalistic in her approach to love. Again, it, very archaic. Yeah, it's very My like... My loins scream for you, therefore you will be mine. Yeah, I don't know. Like, personally, I'm not into fucking narratives as much as I'm into, like, actually... Sensual lovemaking? Okay, no. But, like... <laughs> I just Which mean, one do you want? no, it doesn't. Okay, the way do you, you want said it was the, fucking? the way you said it was weird. But no, I'm saying like Did I say it weird? feels like yeah, <laughs> it feels like aggressive. You know, it it feels like less meaningful, and it I'm more def- interested in characters' emotions. It degrades the women. I feel to yeah. what is between their legs. It's not even just the women; it's them, the men too. The men are like walking, you know, ten inch dicks, bro. Like it's crazy. <laughs> They like, are walking blue balls. Yeah, they're like a walking six pack with a giant 
fucking penis. Like you're just yeah. like yeah. giant fucking there's, there's, I just, there's definitely an attitude I've caught on with her that like and, and honestly a lot of fantasy romance authors I've seen because especially now. Yeah, look, uh, don't read into this. I read a lot of actually like paranormal romance. Don't judge me. Uh, uh, Pat- uh, Briggs. Patricia Briggs. Different. That's not how that. That's not what that is. That's urban fantasy. That's different. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, so and like there is this kind of weird like trend that I Moss indulges in, but is no by no means like the only one. The only one. Mm-hmm. In that there definitely is like this tendency of people to be like weirdly preoccupied with sex, and like I, I know that sounds weird. I know like this one. I'm all the jokes on the comment section about like yeah, people like sex, whatever, blah blah blah. <sighs> But it's, it's almost like, like these these it's like, writers were like suppressed Catholic girls who were always told don't talk about sex, and then it translated into like their novels, you know, because like, that's a very like my, know, my sheltered p- perspective on it. A bit, mm-hmm. my, and I think that's more my point is that like what I said earlier, like nosing people are hot when it's not a good time to be nosing people are hot. Like I'm in mortal peril, and this guy's jumping at me, but all I can think about is how tight his ass is. <laughs> Like, it's so scrumptious. Like his, the, his, his, like, his, like the jeans hugged every curve of his fine masculine butt as, as he decapitated a man and his arterial blood splattered all over the walls of the alley you know, I was in. You it's know what like, I think it is? One of those things is more important than the other. <laughs> I mean, it is obviously the ass. Here's the thing. On a serious note, at least for me and the way that I approach stories, because look, I like a good steamy scene as much as the next person. I like a good action scene as much as the next person. And I know I'm not probably saying anything new, but I just feel like it bears reading reiterating just to reinforce to someone out there that I feel the same as they might is I am so much more interested in characters relationships to one another outside of a sexual context and if sex is intermingled with that emotional connection then that's fantastic and I'm not saying every book character has to have like a deep emotional connection to have sex but I just feel like when every book you have is completely wrapped up in people having sex and then discovering that they're in love with one another, it gets to be kind of old and there's no complexity to it. I I want a mind game, you know? Like, I want, like, intrigue. I want want there to be some level of emotional stakes. Like, it just doesn't feel like sometimes in some of these books, and it's not just about her, but... There's no interest in crafting a narrative that is focused on human emotional experiences in a way that feels complex, like an actual person would be dealing with. You're forgetting that the other half of this equation isn't human. That's a fair point, but at the (laughs) same time... When you're a humanoid creature who claims to be superior to actual humans and you've been alive for literally thousands of fucking years and you've learned absolutely nothing about emotional maturity, then I have an issue. (laughs) It's inconsequential to them, though. But it's not clearly because they clearly experience the same emotions that people do and don't explore them. It's it's weird though because the emotions they experience I see it but at the same time Tamlin's taking this like it's the first time he's ever seen something with an ass and curves like yeah it's very odd it's an infantile kind of way of looking at relationships and the idea of attraction yeah and for someone who's been along around that long you would think that he had sorry. <laughs> He had like kind of a different approach. I don't know. It was just he was a child. Yeah, he acted like a child. He said he like he's clearly sexually experienced. He's old enough to have achieved emotional maturity, but he, he hasn't. Said, and yet he hasn't, and is still like yeah. He's like kind of enraptured at the thought of being with this now, a woman sexually. And now, it's like I feel the novelty should have worn off and. I apologize yeah. if it seems like we're all preoccupied with the sexuality of the book, but it's not entirely our fault. That's a very heavy theme in it. It is. And, I mean, like having said all that, I know a bunch of people are going to come at us and, and be like, well, if you read the rest of the series, like, I understand where the rest of the series goes. But and, for the first book in the series? But for the first book, and I get in, on some level, it was a conscious choice it to have certain big red herring. Yeah, have certain interactions be a certain way. But I'm just saying my piece as a side note. Um, as just a general approach to romance, because I'm getting a little sick of, of the same thing, of it's, the same fucking tiring. thing, <laughs> in terms of like just w- like making me ship people because I want them to fuck so bad. Speaking of shipping, then 
Yes. She ends up telling Nesta everything. And oh, Nesta, yes. And Nesta's like, go back to your high lord. Why the fuck are you here? We don't need you here. And when I first read that, I was like, <laughs> lol. Uh, that was so fucking pointless. <laughs> but then I kind of was like, oh, she's like giving her an out. She's saying, we don't need to be back here. We are safe without you. Get the fuck away. I don't want you. So what does she do? Um, uh, it's worth knowing that um the big impetus for her deciding to leave is also that the house of the girl whose yes. name she gave to Resan was burned down. Her whole family Claire with it. Claire Better. Yes, Claire Better. It was was it said the house burnt down and they couldn't find Claire's body. Yeah. So right there, she's like, oh shit. So she goes back. <laughs> to quote John Mulaney, I had the thought that only blackout drunks and Steve Urkel have. Did, Did I, I do, do that? that? <laughs> That's fair response. That's, and it, it's fitting because she did. Yeah, because literally that was exactly her fault. So she but. goes back to the spring court. She sees Alice and Alice is like, what the fuck are you doing here, girl? We don't need you here. And finally, we're able to hear what happened. So Noah, I want to hear to your, the best of your recollection. What is the blight? Okay, so it's like this weird curse Amarantha put on like a spring court uh, and like that that seems to be spreading everywhere. That's, that seems to be just be generally spreading everywhere. Um, <clears throat> it's implied at least it's in the, it's at least partially on the orders of the High King, but it's also come kind of weird, like just personal beef she has. It, with... No, it's entirely personal beef. Okay. She came over as the ambassador, and she, she went to a party she that Tamlin was at. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I know she was like. I remember her. She went rogue at some point. I was wondering sure, like to what degree the blight was her being rogue. She, she threw the party. Yeah. And that's when that she put the masks on everyone. Okay. There was a party. Apparently, she hosted it. Um, she roofied everybody. She, yeah, quite she, literally. Yeah. Um. There was a masked ball. You know, the the mask. They were all stuck on their faces. Remember that from the beginning. Yep. Um. It was actually a ball to kind of apologize for the fact that she wanted to get with Tamlin. Tamlin sent Lucian to say no, and then she punctured Lucian's eyeball out. Yeah. He's so, like, yeah, that's why we didn't mention that, that Lucian only has one eye. Yeah, it was an apology ball. She's like, sorry for uh, stabbing your friend's your eyes guy. out. <laughs> yeah. Whoopsie. Um, so, yeah, uh, everything's going chill. I think she made, like, a- another advance on Tamlin. Mm-hmm. And he says something very significant. Um, he says something very specific. Uh, he rebuts her in a oddly specifically worded way. He was like, "I would, I would get with a human girl before I ever got with you." And she was like, "Ah, oh, fuck you!" Because the reason well, why—that's a good segue to make a curse, if I ever heard one. Well, because her sister was killed by a human male named Jurian, who betrayed her on the battlefield. Yeah, yeah so, this is a whole super the, Yeah, there's a whole backstory. Like, Jurian was, like he- was like the head of the human rebellion. He's uh, allegedly, I'm told, there's like some more context to this in the future books. But as it's laid out in the first one, he basically seduced her sister onto the human side. She fed him information. Um, then and he brutally betrayed her. And then she was and betrayed she died. and killed. So um, that's why um, Amarantha's like, fuck you. I lay a curse seven times seven years, which would be 49. In which I will hold everyone captive, and then I will take over completely as a high queen. If you cannot find a human woman who hates you with every morsel of her being, who kills one of your own and then loves you, um, which basically is, again, un- un- oddly un- specific. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What the fuck? Yeah, super, he, he super has, fucking specific. Yes, does not only make a human girl fall in love with him, it has to be a human girl who hates the face so much she takes the life of one out of out of the name of hate. Unprovoked like, for pure hate, yeah. So that's um that's what we find out. And apparently there's another part of the curse that we just don't know about. And Alice has like, she's like, and there's one more part of the curse that you should no yeah, you yeah. heard that one like it's like she cannot say it it's part of the curse itself mm-hmm. yeah yeah she can't tell her but so basically though in essence she's telling Favor. so you could have broken the curse like a bunch of times already she's and like, you all fucking you, did it she's like all you had to do was say you loved him you loved him with your stupid whole human heart and we would all be fine but, but now you we're didn't fucked because of you and so now they go where noah um, uh, this is where they go under the mountain. Correct. It's in what we call the middle, which is between the, um, I believe it's between the solar court. So the, the dawn, day and night and the seasonal courts, which are the summer, 
and the autumn, winter, and spring. And it's like no man's land. There's like a few other things in there that like are present in the other book, but one of them is the mountains. So they go there and immediately uh, she's pretty much captured almost yeah, instantly. Like, yeah, for this really down, smart she, hunter, she gets caught right she, after yeah, that. She's like marching down there all like into proud the of herself. Of like literally, into, into the, the thick of it. She goes like with like plans of rescue, which she's almost yeah. immediately overwhelmed and captured on her first encounter. You know what that reminds me of? It's like in the old Spider-Man game where like, you know, you're facing off against Mysterio and he's like got a full like health bar and he's like, oh, and then you like hit him once and he dies. Yep. <laughs> like she's like marching down there like, I'm going to go save Tim. Tamlin. And then <laughs> immediately she gets fucking captured. Like, fuck, I can't save Tamlin. <laughs> yeah, like, it's yeah, so, so she's funny. captured. She's basically driving for Amarantha, who's got, like, Tamlin by her side because he's, like, being forced to be with her. Uh, unclear how far that goes, but she's, he's basically a captive. Um, I think um, Feyre is able to sort of negotiate um, a conditions in which, like, she can free herself and him. Um, yeah, and Arantha's like, I love the goal that you have, so here's what I'm going to do, girl. I'm going to, for the next three full moons, you're going to compete. And if you compete, I'll let them go. Yeah, and she says she gives you, like, two options that are, like, run parallel to each other. It's either complete the three deadly challenges or solve a riddle. Mm-hmm. And she gets only gets one chance with the riddle, but if she gets it right, then she can just skip everything, and um, you know. And then they would be freed instantaneously. Yeah, yeah. Instantaneously. but and because so Ferris gets... is dumb as a fucking pile of rocks, she of course is unable to solve the it's riddle. A, it's, yeah. a, it's like a seven line poem. But the second one, I immediately do the answer. <clears throat> yeah, same. There are those who seek me a lifetime, but never we meet. And those I kiss, but who trample me beneath ungrateful feet. Love. At times. <laughs> That's how I felt. Dude. At times, I seem to favor the clever and fair, but I blessed all those who are brave enough to dare. Love. In my large, my administrations are soft, handed and sweet, but scorned, I become a difficult beast to defeat. It's love. It's so obviously love. <laughs> for the, for though each of my strikes land a powerful blow, when I kill, I do it slow. It's love. <laughs> So if you guys um, picked up, it is actually the sentiment of hate. Um, (laughs) But it's love. And Feyre hears it. She's like, I don't know what the fuck it is. So she agrees to this. And Tamlin next to her isn't really doing anything. Oh, she sees Claire Bedor. Like, she's like spread eagle on the wall. Like, Can I I just say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. uh... But can I just fucking say that... I know that I'm sure we're not the only people to point this out, but just for the sake of saying it, because it's fucking hilarious, the poem, the riddle is so obvious. Like, and I get that Feyre's stupid, and she's like, un- and she's like not good at this kind of she thing. She fucking sucks at it. But my 15 year old brother also read this book, and he literally, I say to him, "What? What do you think the answer to the riddle is?" And he goes. I don't know, because I don't want to be... I, I think I know what it is, but I don't want to be wrong, and then I'm going to feel stupid. <laughs> and I was like, no, no, seriously. Like, I think it's it's exactly what you think it is. Like, it's exactly what you think it is. And he literally was so apprehensive, because he's like, no, then I'm going to say it, and then you're going to think I'm dumb, because he was like, it's too obvious. And he literally cringed and went, is it love? And yes. I was like, yeah, it's fucking love. And he goes, no way. <laughs> like, he was so also dumbfounded. Big baddie who wants love and she's doing everything she can to keep her from get to keep Vera from getting it. Yeah. What do you think the answer's gonna be? <laughs> it's, like, so dumb. Like, that is just to an insane level of, like, not at all clever. Uh, <laughs> it's just so it's bad. So and funny. then, so, Vera agrees. She's like, deal. And then immediately she gets um, brutally assaulted and passes out. Yeah. And she wakes up in a prison cell. Yeah, she just kind of hangs out there for a while. Um, I think Resan makes an offer of help. Um, no, no, no. That's actually after the first trial. First Lucian comes in. He's like, why the fuck are you here? Like, what? She's like, I love him. <laughs> Idiot. And, yeah. he, and he's just kind of generally an asshole. Uh, again, I'm sure I, I'm told that his behavior is mostly explained, but for the most part. For Resan? Yeah, like in the second book, he's mold, but in, in, right now he's yeah. just kind of an asshole. Like he's yeah. She goes to the first. She goes to like a thing, and um, and she was like all beaten, bruised, whatever. And Amarantha threatens to like kill Lucian in front of her if she doesn't tell her her real name because she still thinks it's Claire, and she's the nice person, and she tells it as Lucian's getting beat up. 
Um, so obviously a ying. <laughs> Even though she owes Lucian absolutely fucking nothing because he tried to friends. have her killed like multiple times. Kind okay. of friends. Yeah, they're kind know. of friends, but you know, I don't know. Oh, no. I, I don't think Lucian would have w- would have thought twice about literally having her murdered if it was the other way around. Yeah, um, it is the uh, the first trial after she saves Lucian's life. She um, she wakes up and to two guards bring her into like this pit, and she finds out that like someone in the crowd has bet everyone's bet against her, but one person bet for her. We don't know who that is. So she, who could it be? I don't know. <laughs> but she goes down into the um into like this thing and giant mud pit. Into a mud pit, yeah. And essentially you know that SpongeBob episode where that worm comes out? <laughs> it was big, hairy, and pink. <laughs> Literally Why are you talking about Patrick's belly button. <laughs> I am at, she is facing what we call the worm, W-Y-R-M. Yeah, it's a worm. And I imagine it's the SpongeBob, like, Alaskan inch bullworm. Worm. Yeah, I really do. Um, also, to clarify, worm, I literally also pictured the Alaskan bullworm. Worm spelled W-Y-R-M is often used in reference to a dragon, so this is kind of a letdown. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It you just get cool this, like, was a dragon. this little slithery shit thing. So she's in there, she realizes it can't see, it can only smell, so she, um, douses herself in its feces so she blends in she, then she creates a trap because of course she's Feyre she's a huntress and I mean, um, I, the this, worm impales itself I, I have to say actually in this instance this is one of the few times her like background as a huntress becomes relevant and interesting yeah, yeah. I confess the fight team was a little confusing to, uh, on a read to understand what was actually happening in the layout of this battlefield mm-hmm. excuse me um but it is like one. It's like one of the few times Feyre gets to be smart. Like, yeah, she's able to like understand this creature and its habitat, what its senses are, and how she can like exploit its lack of certain senses to her benefit. And she's mm-hmm. able to beat it. And the one time where she's actually at a disadvantage, the worm like she loses track of it. She he- hears behind you. It was Lucian like mm-hmm. calling out to save her. So you know something bad's gonna happen to Lucian now. But um, she breaks her arm in this whole thing, and she wins, but it's covered in mud and feces, and she blacks out from the pain. The worm is dead, and she, um, she, you know, gets brought back to her cell, and she soon enters, like, this really horrible fever because her bone is exposed, it is super infected, and Lucian yeah. had come to heal her last time, and he's not showing up. Yeah, well, that's what happens when you cover yourself in feces and then have a giant flesh wound as a human being. Not even just a flesh wound. It's like an open wound. Yeah, it's like a huge... Open fracture. Huge, huge wound. And then Noah... With shit in it. <laughs> Noah, who comes in this time? This time, Rhysand Sand comes in. Yeah. And um, I think uh, we learned he, I think, was the one who bet in her favor... So yeah. he won, like, a fuck ton of money. <laughs> he was like, I was already rich before, but, you know, that definitely didn't damage my coffers. Yeah, so um, I think he offers to, like, fix her up if, like, she agrees. For a bargain. To, for a deal. Penley fairies still make bargains for some reason, even though they do nothing else. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the bargains are what are binding, but literally nothing else they've done so they far can lie, has been true. So, I they mean, can lie, but if they make a deal, it's a damn good one. I mean, that, that <laughs> I'm just feels... wondering now, too. Um, she made a deal with Amarantha. Where the fuck is that tattoo? That's okay. a good fucking point. Where's okay. the tattoo for okay, Amarantha? Um, just for their context, um, I don't think she accepts initially, but upon eventually agreeing under more or less coercion, mm-hmm. uh, she gets a magical tattoo that denotes her ongoing sort of bargain with d- Rhysand. It's yeah, a gorgeous bargain. tattoo. It like goes up tattoo. her arm and it has like a big eye in the center of her palm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, she has a tattoo to know that she's currently under the sort of geist so of he a needs, bargain. She needs to spend one week every year, every one week every month with him in the night court if now, they were to get why? out. why? We don't know! Again, unclear reasons. And Yeah, he has honestly, absolutely no reason whatsoever but the if, fact that from he her perspective. That, the fact that he offers that bargain like one week a month back in the, the night court that shows that he believes in her yeah it's nice but again it's so funny it's so funny because he's so obviously going to be a super important character in the next book because why the fuck else would he be helping her right now (laughs) and literally the final third of the book you know like why else would he be doing this yeah so um she makes the deal and then she because she's like whatever fucking cinderella (laughs) 
um, Amarantha is like, yeah. I want my walls clean. And the walls are like disgusting and she's using dirty water. So really the payment for her fucking like saving Lucian's life is Lucian's mom, the like the queen of the autumn court coming over and replacing her, the dirty water with clean water. Like how is that like a life for a bucket of water? Like, I, I don't know, dude. I mean, I guess it's the most he could do in the circumstances. I know, but like, but then she's like, consider the debt repaid for what you did for Lucian. I'm like, that's not the same thing, no, bitch. That no. is not the same thing She could have come in and healed Feyre. <laughs> yeah, that is not even she close She literally could have come in that and actually healed her. Might, that actually might have been a more immediately useful. Uh, and yeah, thanks yes. for your dirty and more water, relevant, bitch. Literally a life for a life in that case. But you know what? It was because they were like, we're going to kill you if you don't like... If you don't clean, but like, of course they wouldn't have. They like the entertainment. Yeah, they wouldn't have killed her because they uh, people had clearly people have money riding on this. <laughs> like, what do you mean? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, so then she has to clean a chamber pot. It's in Resan's like room, of course. And Resan gets mad at the guards and like, don't make her do any more stupid shit, or else I'm gonna kill you. And I'm like, again, Protective. where are his motives coming yeah, from? What are like, your why does he want to make sure that? This is ridiculous. So then she's just sitting in there. Um, eventually, Lucian comes by and is like, why didn't you wait until like I came over to heal your arm? And she's like, um, I was dying. Dude, I was like going to pass out I, from I, the pain. I, I, even, and you were taking a real long... You were taking your sweet ass time I mean, to come I to know. my jail cell. It's worth knowing that I think even when she like makes the bargain, I'm not sure she's in, like, entirely in her right mind. I think she's like... Yeah, she's kind of delirious. She's like fevered and yeah, delirious. She's so Ill. I, and I think she even like does actively regret making the decision even under those she circumstances. Does. She's like, I would not have done that had I been like rational and sane at the moment. Yeah, but she's in, in retro- a lot of pain. Too. In retrospect, she doesn't say to Resan, like, you could have asked for anything. Like, you could could have asked for all my time and he only chose a week so i don't know it's like weird at this point we don't know what's well, up well i always had a suspicion too that resand was the reason lucian got delayed resand yeah like no no, no. It, lucian was beat up brutally because he spoke out for Feyre at the event uh, he fixed he fixed right. her arm why didn't he fix him yeah why didn't he fix lucian it do, i don't why Resan didn't? Yeah, fix I'm Lucian? saying he. It was his think... excuse to go talk to her. You know what I mean? Like well, I think he was Re- really taking advantage Re-San's of the situation. Resan's bargain was to like, kind of like, egg on Tamlin, which is what Amarantha wanted to like, kind of like, mm-hmm. you know, Amarantha's digging this whole Resan favorite dynamic. She really is. Mm-hmm. But if he had helped Lucian, that would have seemed like really sus for like crossing crossing the court lines. Mm. Why are you helping Lucian? Like, mm. it's a bit more like. It's a bit easier to pretend like you're playing with the food. That oh, you're... I see. I see what you mean. Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe. Yeah, like, anyway, so now they're at this thing that's, like, really contentious in the whole Akotar community. Some people are like, oh, this is fine. Some people are like, oh, I'm this not is gonna actually speak fine. I'm not going to speak on it. So, uh, it is the, um, do you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah, doesn't he make her his arm candy? Yeah. <laughs> that's a nice okay, way of putting it. So yeah, that's basically a kind of during the interim, like just to be clear, there's apparently long stretches of time it's between a month. the trials. It's full moons. Yeah, so it's like there's like a month between trials. Um so there's a long period of time where she's just a captive. Mm-hmm. Which is like nothing for um, the fairies, but yeah, yeah. like <laughs> for um one of the things the night court and Reese and some of the others get up to is they throw these big parties. Uh, no, it's just everyone. Everyone's attending. Okay, everyone's attending. They roll um, um Amaretha holds them like every night. Yeah, these big parties. And one of the she decides she has to attend and um resand He like uh, dresses her up in like literal like see-through silk and paints her arms and yeah um he drugs her he basically yeah drugs her um so, so yeah she uh, goes through the night non-voluntarily by the way i don't think she's like consenting when he basically like says you have no ob- you have no choice but to take this wine fairy wine before you go in he so he she uses as a, like an, es- an escape and but she doesn't remember anything yeah so to be clear according to him i think i think it's i think it's established well, to be clear like he doesn't do anything like actively sexual to her like no. he doesn't make her have sex with him or anyone remember, else remember she has the body paint on the body so paint like, is, like every to- everyone can see who touched her and it's almost for her to kind of see too that he didn't touch her yeah but like that does not mean he also again yeah. it's like we're, we're wearing what's described as more like i think it's like almost like tissues more than anything it's and like, like a see-through, see-through silk uh cover, that doesn't even cover that much to begin with um she, she like apparently does dancing um provocatively 
he like she like sits on his lap and he like puts his arm on her hand on her waist and it's like yep. I think it's the idea that, he's, that they assert is that he's doing this to like prove he's doing something degrading to her without having to go on like full on sexual assault. Mm-hmm. But I still feel like it's the, weird. It's weird, and he's like, you gotta understand. I know people can defend the ac- ca- actions of the characters, but you gotta understand this is still a story that Sarah J. Mass chose to write, and she chose to make it that this is the circumstances they were in. And like, I'm just thinking, if he really had no malintent, why didn't he tell her? No one else can in- infiltrate Vera's mind except for Resand. Yeah, because he's got like the special. He's powers. the only one with the the Damati powers. We know they're called later. So like, yeah. why didn't he at least tell her like, look, this has to happen? Yeah, or like ask he her. He could have played it off as like, because he's still trying to be like that evil seeming guy. He's not trying to be nice, whatever. But he could have been like, you need to go to this. And uh, quite frankly, I don't want you to remember what happens. But um. I won't do anything because well, well, it's not he, fun. He could have. The thing is, I get he's trying to keep up appearances for Amarantha, but he has no reason to hide that from Feyre. Yeah, like, well, he doesn't want to seem like a good guy. But I don't get fucking why. Like, why? In what? Why not in this context? Like, do you have to seem like a bad guy to Feyre? That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. Yeah, like that just seems inherently to like make her mistrust you at a critical juncture where her trust is kind of a really important resource to it, muster in this. Like, it's kind of unfortunate project. because as they continue, she. Sees it as like an escape so like yeah if he just fucking said to her like dude i can make you not remember being humiliated for months at a time like yeah, just say the word and she'd be like actually that sounds like a great idea will you like will you like make sure i'm cool and he'd be like yeah i'll make sure you're cool and it's then, like, like it you have fine. to go to these parties do you want to remember he could have honestly gotten another bargain out of it like yeah. and even kept up the appearance that way like yeah if you promise to blah 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 every day yeah, i'll I make will, you forget i don't know i will not hurt you um at one of these parties though um a high fae from the summer court is caught trying to escape and so resand crushes their mind like a bug and the Summer King kind of, like, looks at Risa and is, like, tipping the hat. Mm. Like, thanks. That thank, was nice of you. Thank you. Second task. To be clear, the reason that was nice is because Amarantha probably would have tortured them worse. So, basically, yeah. so functionally, like, it lobotomizing them to the point where they don't Correct. really have a personality or sense of capacity to think anymore was, like, the nice thing to do. She was like, I don't want you, I didn't want you to melt his mind just just um just torture him a little he's like whoops got carried away um noah the next task uh next task task number two, number two. the lever thing the lever the one with the lucy thing. the one with um, lucian yeah um i actually forget that one so uh, that's, isn't it like a series of doors or something it's it has- three levers on the wall and lucian's on the other side she's on this side lucian's too far away from her to actually like see the levers but there's like um like almost like this old fashioned Indiana Jones style like system <laughs> coming down from the ceiling with spikes on them and uh she recognizes that there are letters on the wall and it's a riddle but she she's a dumbass and can't well not a dumbass and can't read but rather she never Sarah took- is a dumbass on top of the fact that she can't separately read. that she can't read and Feyre like never actually took Tamlin's thing to heart when he offered to teach her to read and her pride got in the way so she didn't and so she goes to reach for a lever and she feels like this hot like ouch on her hand and then she reaches for the other lever and there was nothing and then she reaches for another letter and ouch um and she it's the hand that has the tattoo on it she looks up and Rhysand is just like looking nonchalantly at like a piece of dusk on his shirt and uh, she pulls the lever that doesn't hurt and Again, it saves everyone. This is a little suspicious. Why is he saving her? We don't fucking know. <laughs> What's your deal, Resan? What's but your thoughts? considering this is a Sarah J. Mass book and hot guys are only ever nice to girls because they want to fuck them, yeah, make pretty... make some assumptions. Because I certainly did. So, wh- Noah, what do you think about that, that trial? Well, again, um, well, in this case, it kind of feels like it undoes a little bit of what the first trial did of now her success is entirely dependent on outside intervention. Yeah. Um, and not even really something she did. Like, again, as far as we're aware, she's done nothing to actually warrant this. Now, I'm not saying that as like she's like doesn't deserve to be held or that this is a good cause. It's that like from her perspective, she's had no interaction with Resand that would motivate him to help her. Like she wasn't like. Like Lucian, when she like did him a kindness and was repaid by those who love him, or like that they have some kind of bond that makes him want to help her. Like this is entirely 
the aid of an individual she has no power or influence or friendship with. The implication is that, like... for reasons outside of her understanding. Yeah, the implication is that he sees her as a means of escaping this, but at the same time, we don't know if that's actually what's happening. Well, well you know... Again, regardless of what the context is, is that, like, this is not something she ever did anything to warrant through her own actions. Like, no. again, she did not make any conscious effort to do resand a solid. She and... met him once. She met him once in very hostile conditions, and now he is of his own accord making an effort to help her. Like she is no. Yeah, that's clearly suspicious. There's clearly more to this story. Well, I mean, I, I get that, but I'm saying from this, from I'm from the perspective of someone who read this book, and there, only this book, there is you. no yeah. like action she took that earned her this reward. Well, you know what? You know what makes me annoyed about this task, and I don't like to get into the habit of suggesting fixes because it's not my story and, like, you know, oh, who uh, the fuck am I? Just one thing I want to say also is that it also kind of means the whole Chekhov's gun of him, of Tamla teaching her to read amounted to nothing. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm going to teach you to read, and now there's a, he was, like, a, ta- a task reliant on your ability to read, well, and you learn, oh, actually, I have to do that so seriously, so I yeah, never well, actually that's, learned anything. that's what I'm going to say. What that's kind of ties into what I'm about to say is that, like, I don't like to get into the habit of suggesting changes, but what I think would have been cool for this scene, especially because I think the tasks, you know, if she really wanted to do this subversion of like a, a, a princess story, because really in, in all fairness, as much as I don't love Beauty and the Beast retellings, the one thing I do like about them is the idea that the woman's the one who has all the power to save somebody in the relationship. But now she's relying on this man and like an evil guest. And she's continuously fucking relying on dudes because they have fairy magic in this story. And the trials I thought were like a cool opportunity to show that Feyre is capable of saving herself and everyone else. Quite literally. She had the intervention of Lucian she had the intervention of Resand, yeah. and in the last one, she has. That's the only one where th- she thinks for herself. Like, wouldn't but it have at, been? We'll get ahead, to that yeah. last one, but the last one, it kind of like, we'll get to that. Well, the second one, I think, would have been really cool if she c- did learn how to read right from Tamlin, or at least partially. And was unconfident in the task, right? But did it anyway, and she solved the riddle and picked the right lever. And it kind of gave her a level of confidence, like, maybe maybe I can do this. Like, maybe I can try and solve the riddle. Like, or, and then she immediately then gives second, up. Yeah, but then second guess herself because, well, maybe I just got lucky. There were only three levers. It was a best chance out of three. Like, maybe maybe my answer to that riddle on the wall wasn't even right, and I just got lucky and picked the right lever. Like, And, and that would make sense. It was like It would be like a slow character development of her, like, realizing that she wasn't a complete fucking dim, dimwit who needed, like, a guys help every five minutes yeah you know like i don't know like it's kind of funny that you say that because immediately after she um she finishes the lever thing she gives up all hope at solving the the riddle she's in like yeah, her she's deep, like she's in her deepest despair and then she hears this music come into her cell and she can't tell where it's coming from but that's the only thing that keeps her afloat but it's just funny that like a moment that could have been so pivotal for like personal development and growth was like the antithesis of that yeah all right. Okay, next big thing that happens is they're at one of their balls, and Feyre does not drink the wine yet. It's early in the ball. And Tamlin comes over to her, and they he kind of, like, motions to the closet. Um, he ravishes her. Um, he goes all, yeah. like, possessive man on her. And Rhysand comes in. He's like, you fucking idiot. Why are you touching her? People She's are going to see. Like, and, like, Feyre's expecting him to kind of, like, stick up and, like, do something or say something to Rhysand, but he kind of like walks out with his tail between his legs and he's like, oh, she's like, oh my God. Then soon Amarantha comes in. So then Rhysand goes to ravish her and then it's whatever. And then Which she's is technically yeah. sexual assault. Um, again, people have mixed feelings about uh, that scene. Again, I, I say like maybe in the context of the plot contrived, this makes sense. This is, is like the least evil of all the options available. Yeah. But I say again, Was it really? in context, <laughs> I've got to use an out, the in, alternative. On a, on a, on I mean, a, the alternative was of Amarantha seeing the paint was smudged, knowing that Tamlin just came out of it. But the only thing that he could do would be be to like make my, out my, with her no, there's my, no other excuse not, he could have I'm come not, up ar- with no i'm not here to argue about whether or not this was the best option i'm saying this oh. was the option that sarah j moss decided was the best option available. oh yeah i'm not saying like do what do you think was this the best option i'm saying i understand sarah j moss is an author this is a story she wrote and she decided to create a scenario in which the least evil option available was 
sexually assault a woman <laughs> I've been regularly sexually assaulting for her own benefit. It's like yeah my face is like that emoji with like the the curved bottom line <laughs> yeah because like, that's that, kind of upsetting and, that, and that's kind of weird it's like you know like the best option available to our some of our main characters is i have to regularly assault this woman a little bit so she's not assaulted a lot more by strangers uh, yeah it's just Bree sand does kind of try to make amends later that night because you he know, comes up to her i'm sorry sorry to interrupt but you know yeah. what would have been really cool and empowering for Feyre is if she realized she fucked up and she basically said to Resand, like, ravish me. Like, ravish me. Like, and he was like, okay. he would have been like, fix, she would have said, fix this. Yeah. Or like, kiss me. Yeah, or kiss this. me or something. And but he just would have done so, it. Like, caught. Like, again, it could have been such, like, a small thing like, that yeah, would have impacted the whole perception. A small, empowering moment of her, like, for once. Like, because I thought her arc was going to be being less of a fucking idiot. No. You know? <laughs> like, because, it, 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 like, it's. <sighs> It, it could have been she one could have like context clues like Resand isn't like actively plotting against her like after so many times of like of course it's, it's again broaches into the is this actually assault thing but like after drugging her like night after night Sorry. Uh, <laughs> after drugging her night after night and realizing that the hands only go to the elbows mm-hmm. or like the like like the handprints only go that far like don't you think you'd realize oh like this is gross but he's not nearly as gross as I thought yeah like, again, yeah, I, I just think it, it, there's so many little things. What did you drop? My headphones. <laughs> People keep dropping things. This I'm episode. sorry. Yeah, yeah, I just think it could have been a small thing where there's just little instances this whole time under the mountain where I was just waiting for Feyre to have, like, a real character development moment. And she, she just never fucking does. He tries to make it up to her later. He comes to her and he's all stressed out. He's like, you're the only person I can talk to and risk talking to because your mind is safe from everyone but me. So he talks to her. He's like, Amarantha is plotting against me because my dad killed Tamlin's dad and brother. So she's like trying to take revenge on me because I caused Tamlin pain. And he also says that he's doing all this intentionally, which he should have done from the beginning, to rile uh, Tamlin up. So that way when the curse breaks, he snaps and kills Amarantha. Mm -hmm. So... Then she's kind of like, oh, you've been helping me a lot. But the problem is that should have been something that happened sooner. Yeah, you you could have just told me all this already. You could have told me that you just want to make Tamlin mad. You didn't need to say, so that way he'll kill Amarantha. But you could have said, I'm trying to, like, piss off your boy. Like, like, but then again, that's giving her the benefit of the doubt that she'd actually, like, connect the dots. But she wouldn't have, you know? No. It's like, it's uh, like everything needs to be explained to Feyre so explicitly and after a while it gets to be so infuriating you're like you can't connect any dots not not even (laughs) one to two it's like it's like the buzzfeed article i've connected it's like buzzfeed on self i've connected the dots you haven't connected shit i've connected them yeah like and she's like drawing like arbitrary things in the sky Uh, all right so um yeah, what happens next again the third trial yeah so the third trial the third trial noah walk us through all right, I'm trying. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember if it's like the, what I'm remembering is the trial, or if that was something that came after. What do you think it is? Was it the three hot with three captives with the yep. uh, with the ash stake? Yep. Um. Okay. So she three bas- innocents. So Emma the captives three innocent people, three bay. Um, gives Feyre like a, a spear or like some wooden stake, basically made of ash wood, which yep. you know kills Fey. And basically says, execute them and basically show your resolve. Yep. And uh, so she goes one by one. And performs three summary executions of innocent people. And when um, she gets to the last person. That's, I think, when she kind of finally, like, cracks the riddle. No. Okay. So what happens is, one by one, they've had, like, burlap sacks on them. And she's looking at Tamlin. She's like, this is it. This is the end. As soon as I kill these people... I will be okay. Free. So, but just to provide some context and like a little bit of like justification, as weird as it sounds for Feyre, I think she's kind of viewing this as a sort of greater good scenario. Yeah, but like, we haven't gotten to the greatest part of it. The, uh, I, I know. I'm, I'm trying to say like I think the end idea is that they think if they get free from Amarantha, they can maybe do something to stop the whole murder curse thing that's affecting the land like well she is the curse as soon as the curse she's about amarantha once she completes the trial will lift the curse yeah she'll lift the curse and that'll save so many more so like 
it's not just I'm killing these three innocent people to save my boyfriend. It's like I will save this whole land and all the innocents um, who could be affected by it as it grows. So there was a little bit of like needs of the many going on here. So yeah. So she kills the first one. It kills her inside. She kills the second one. It kills her inside again. And she goes for the third one. And she's really about to turn the stake on herself when the burlap sack comes off the top. And it's Tamlin. Mm. Yep. So she looks at Tamlin, and she's, like, freaking the fuck out. Yeah. And Feyre has, for literally once, (laughs) in the whole goddamn book, she's like, you know, why would Amarantha want me to kill Tamlin? The one thing that she wants more than anything out of this. Yeah, like, she wants Tamlin, so... This doesn't make any sense. And it goes against our bargain as well. And so she actually uses her brain and uses her senses, like Alice said. And it's like a supercut of all the things she's heard. And throughout this time... It's a supercut? That's kind of true. There's like one part of the curse that like we didn't know about and they couldn't tell us about. So she's like, that's a Raven style. She's realizing like these Fae are super smart. They wouldn't have just left doors open like knowing that I was in the house. Like... They would have known I was coming, so she thinks back to these comments like, ah, Tamlin, for a guy with a heart of stone, you really are, like, being a pushover on this. And that's when she's like, no. Maybe. No. It wasn't. No. A metaphor. No! (laughs) The first time something is literal in these goddamn books. I know. She literally... (laughs) <laughs> she's a dumbass who on top of being a dumbass coincidentally also can't read and somehow she assumed all of that was a metaphor up until this one moment when really everything else she's like oh oh the metaphor what's that like, i never learned what that was but i assumed <laughs> you were just kidding <laughs> you were just kidding so she takes a steak she plunges it into tamla's test and it hits a hard impasse so then yeah. Sorry, Sorry that, was, that was a mosquito. <laughs> mosquito! <laughs> Die! <laughs> Die, okay. bitch. Sorry, so, so she loud. um she she um stabs Tamlin and um y- Yeah. Yeah. But nothing happens. Yeah. Because um Amarantha is pissed and Tamlin and uh and she turns to her and she's like, Break it. Break it. But the thing is, Ta Amarantha said she will release them if she completes the trials. She said she would release them the the curse instantaneously if she got the riddle. So Amarantha's like, I didn't say when I was going to let them go. I just said I would. It could be in 50 years. It could be in 100 years. And that's when Fela's like, no, 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 no. And that's when the torture starts. So that is when Amarantha starts beating her all over the place like a fucking rag doll. And it's like one of those voodoo dolls and like those old TV shows like where you flip them over and they go side to side like from um, Fairly Odd Parents. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And so it gets to that point and Tamlin screams like, no, don't do this to her. And she's like, oh, you really love this girl? Like I was so stupid. And eventually she gets to the point where she almost snaps her neck and Feyre something. Finally. Something. <laughs> She goes, the answer is love. And then her neck breaks. Uh, Okay. Can I? Okay. 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 All right. So the thing that drives me insane about this scene is I don't, I knew, we all knew, of course, Feyre was going to get the riddle. Like, because you wouldn't just have a riddle and not have her solve it. (laughs) And that's fine. But it's like, again, she solves the riddle the fuck out of nowhere. Like, you know what would have been really nice? It's like like I said, if back during the second trial, she actually solved a riddle and she solves it. Like, if she actually had thought about the riddle for longer than two seconds, what if part of the reason she doesn't solve the riddle is because she's like afraid of her own hubris like she thinks she's that like, this maybe, is so simple I yeah like this is too simple that would have played right into it sgm come on you know what i'm saying like or if she just thought oh maybe i'm hanging around these fey too much i i'm getting like overly confident like and if i answer the riddle then i'm fu- like and i and it's wrong i fuck everyone you know like i think that it it's okay for then her to have okay thought and that the final time. moments of her life she would scream out love but it's like right? as she's being tortured to death and hearing she's like, thinking about t- the riddle like, what the fuck <laughs> 
fuck? <laughs> like, like what you're saying, like, it's just like the wrong time, like wrong place. Like, come on. Yeah, like it would have made sense if she, while she was in the jail cell, she just said to herself, what if the answer is love? Like, nah. But then, like, when she's getting her neck wrung, like you're saying, it just would have it would have made sense for her to just be like, "Fuck it, love," <laughs> you know? Like, what does she have to lose? That's you know? Ridiculous. Like, you're not thinking about how to answer a goddamn riddle when you had no idea what the answer could possibly be while you're literally being choked to death. Like, it's just it's ridiculous. I'm sorry. Okay, like, because the setup, and I don't want to sound like I'm constantly shitting on SJM, because I <laughs> love the setup for this. I really do. And it makes me annoyed because I th- I think it could have been so cool, you know? And it's just and little. And it was just so not. And it's just little things where you're like, <sighs> like, it just makes a difference when it starts to add up, you know? Like, the setup was so good for this, and it just It would have been a good <laughs> character development. <laughs> yeah. And then it wasn't. <laughs> like, so her neck cracks she like is dead but not entirely dead she sees like this light um connecting her to the end of the tunnel and um meanwhile tam was going ape shit like since she said it the curse broke he went beast mode and shredded amarantha's neck like no hesitation um the adder tries to help but um doesn't do jack shit so they run away then Feyre's dead, again, still hanging on by that little th- thread of light. And um, she, all the different High Lords come up to Tamlin, who's, like, kneeling by her now with Amarantha decapitated a few feet away. And they all drop a little, like, kernel of light, of, like, a little power You're, like, onto, her, magic. onto her body. And um, once all the, once all the body, all, 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 like, the pieces are on her body, she just... Like, <laughs> <laughs> she like gets up a la Be- uh, Bella she, got, she gets like, up really fast on. and she like touches the seat no I'm kidding yeah. and she like looks around and like she can micro zoom into like a speck of dust yeah like again <laughs> Bella <laughs> but, breaking like, dawn literally um, she, she, she's now a fucking high fae of course yeah. Well, she's uh, also a national me. hero, despite being a moron. She's be- she's called K- Feyre Cursebreaker. Yeah, Feyre. So uh, she's free. Um, her and um, Hoomst Tampon have a little. I just want to reiterate, I hate Tampon. I think he's so boring and stupid. They have sex. Yeah, he they, sucks. They do it, and um, uh, I think I think Vsian does remind her that remember she does have his deal. Yeah, he's like yeah. he BT does. You see still you owe month. me. <laughs> See ya. See ya. I think it's funny that after the curse is broken in this absolutely hellhole that is under the mountain, they all do not instantaneously run away. They kind of like yeah, spend another few just nights like there. Chilling. I'm like, they're like just um, they're just chilling. I don't think that most people would want to do that. Yeah, <laughs> and so they're like having sex in like the bedroom that like she was tortured in, and like he had to stay in. I'm like, this is fucking ridiculous. Yeah, and like, then so many people have been essayed in this place. Yeah, and you're just like going at it like it's hot, and it's just not it's very odd and then after she's getting her hangy panky and she feels a little pull towards like the roof so she goes up there and she sees Reese and he's like hey i just wanted to give you a little tug and say i'll see you next oh month. wait wait sorry to interrupt you but like before we get to like the last part because i know you want to talk about like the last scene and everything uh-huh. but like can i just say that once she realized Reese was on her side why did she not seriously consider for like a good while like holy shit this man has been raped for like I know. decades. Never crosses her mind. Like, <laughs> like, don't yeah, you think like, you think would he... see him in like a whole new light that he's been enduring like literal sexual abuse like, so for like, absolutely dec- decades? Decades of sexual servitude. There's even a point where he like shows up to her, I think like clearly like ruffled because he's just been with Amarantha and he's like, suggesting that even that is something he's doing to aid her like that I, was I, the, that was I, the night before the third trial when he was like, like you're the only person i can talk to oh yeah he's he saying is like he's like i've been trying to wear her out essentially to keep her like busy and distracted to like do anything against you Ew. yeah and she like and there's a lot never of just considers it's really uncomfortable this. no she still thinks he's an asshole like that is such a i'm like you know even if she still viewed him as kind of an asshole like wouldn't you think to yourself Maybe he's got a good fucking reason to come off as an asshole. Like that, he's that kind of sexually assaulted for the last forty nine years. Yeah, like that he's he's true. in a very miserable situation. Like, like I felt it's a, it's kind of a weird spot for me because on the one hand that is very true and like everyone who has their own trauma response is valid. Like there's no such thing as a good trauma victim. Like everyone's response is valid. But yeah. um, I guess it's like 
I'm having trouble with Greg's side is the fact that he the the way he's he did help without the trials we got to stand when you're reading the book he comes across off as very antagonistic yeah during these efforts like he's not like hey let's just work something out i can help you he's like he's, he's kind of leveraging the fact that i have power over you in this moment of weakness and i'm absolutely trying to like exploit it for my own benefit against yours so i, I, I understand that i'm not saying she would have to do a complete 180 and think like oh he's but a be good guy now it, but, you bitch yeah but like you that wouldn't cross your mind like you wouldn't consider like that he's complex you know, like, she just No, he's doesn't. just evil. He's yeah. an evil man. <laughs> you know, I'm not he's saying... He's Hades of the Night Court. Yeah. It's so funny. To me. Like, it's not funny, because it's not funny, but, like, it's just... Perplexing. It's just so weird. <laughs> she is so narrow-minded until she has these massive epiphanies that completely contradict, contradict everything that SJM has shown us is possible for her. Yeah, I mean, for a character who does so many things that are objectively morally gray in a lot of situations... She never considers or gives other people the same considerations that she expects the reader to have of her. No. Like, she only ever sees people, in the, especially in the first book, and for a very long chunk of the second book, like, going into it, is, is she only ever considers people, like, this, you know, light and dark, black and white kind of thing. And then when they switch, they switch completely. You'll see the character assassination in the next book. No, it's like, you're either good or... And you stay good or you're good until you're bad or you're bad until you're good. Yeah, like there's no there's no grayness in anyone except Feyre, at least in Feyre's mind. Yeah, it's kind of, it, it's very self, self-interested. Um, so the book kind of ends with, um, on their last day before they leave, she gets that tug up to the roof and she sees um, Rhysand and Rhysand's like, hey, I'll see you next month. And he goes to turn and look at her and then he, he kind of like looks at her weird like, ah! And then he evaporates. So that's where we leave off with Reese boy. Um, and then her and Tamlin go home. <laughs> and she just like, he looks at her weird. He has this weird startled moment of just like, ah. And then, <laughs> and then he evaporates. GTFOs. And she's just like, huh. Interesting. I'm not going to think any more about this. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> back goes to, about her life. Back to my big dicked man. Yeah, doesn't do, question do, 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 it do, do, at do. all. So she goes back and they leave to the summer court. And at spring court, and he's like, and now it all begins. So yeah, that that was the first book. How, how, what do you think, Noah? Um, so, it only gets better from here. Yeah, look, uh, <laughs> it's probably not like terrible from an objective standpoint, but like they could have done so many different things. It could have handled a lot of what it did better. Um, the big thing. I know people some call it new adult. I um because it's of the additional degree of which sex is acknowledged it's also the age um, of the main character she's like 20 he's about to sneeze it looks like <laughs> yeah sorry um but it seems like it still has a bit of young adult i guess immaturity about it these characters are all like a lot less emotionally mature than they probably should be mind they, you she came from writing throne of glass which is, is in, a, which is young adult yeah throne yeah. of glass is very young adult in very tone. almost like to the point where I need to take breaks with it. Yeah, because it's just so it's so teenagery that as an adult it's it's tiresome. <laughs> it's infantile. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, she she does try in this series and personally I actually enjoyed this series um for different reasons. I, I, I don't begrudge anyone their enjoyment of it. Like if you're if, if you if it brings you joy, uh more power to you, I'm glad. Brings me joy uh, ripping it apart. It is funny to roast it. Like, I actually did enjoy the second book. The first book, I'm not going to lie, I fucking hated this book. I didn't like it. I, I liked the second book. I hated it. I didn't even want to read the second book. You were, like, trying to convince me, please read this. And I was like, dude, if this sucks, because the second book is long. It's like a, it's a tome. Dude, yeah. I, I You'll can't. finish it in, like, two days. Do you, so do you think you're going you're gonna to read the second book? I think I am just for kind of like completionism sake. I'm kind of I, I'm I guess I'm, I'm I'm in too deep at this point. I'm curious. <laughs> you I, gotta finish this series, then you gotta finish the other Crescent City book. Yeah, because I've heard there's some like stuff with that. Uh, it's so. good. It's good. The Crescent this book crawled on the floor so Crescent City could walk at a moderate pace. <laughs> <laughs> like I hate saying this book walked so that one could run because I feel like this one kind of scraped by and Crescent City is only gonna get better. So I say like you know we're we're fast walking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's like uh, you next to me, Roy. I, 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 <laughs> 
Okay, that was funny, but they don't know why. It's because you're like a fucking giraffe. And I'm also like a foot and a half taller than her. Yeah, and I'm an Oompa Loompa, so... No, you're not. There's... You're just fun-sized. Dude. <laughs> Rory's valid. Um, She's phallic? Valid. <laughs> no, Veronica, no. Bad. Get your mind out of the gutter with Sarah J. Maz. Squirt gun, squirt gun. Uh, anyway so um it's probably time we wrap this shit up thank you so much noah yeah no that was problem. fun yeah for coming on we hope you enjoyed our we've special recording guests. we've been recording in your basement for the last year for this show it's fun that now he finally was able to experience it lou experienced it one time yeah uh, but now noah got to experience it and participate in it yeah well hopefully we'll have him back if you guys liked it for a yeah. very special episode part two when he finishes the a next court of mist and fury yeah. right. by sarah j moss all right everyone it was a pleasure talking to you all today and this was our first ever edition of a very special episode featuring noah hi thanks again <laughs> hi and bye, bye. all right that was us bye, bye. bye. <laughs>